Welcome to Starfinder, The Fragments of Eternity. It is session 25 and it is the 24th of June 2019. I am Ryan, the GM. Here are the players. Hello. I am Nico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing Zora, the best captain. Alright, I'm Alex. I'm playing Nix5, the android mechanic and savant. That's new. And then it's Colin. Uh, anyway, Colin. I am Colin. I'm playing my <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Did someone get it? Did yeah. someone we get all... it? That was amazing. I think we all got it. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, spooky, sneaky. That shit. The good stuff. The <laughs> primo stuff. <clears throat> Hi. I'm Callum. I'll be playing Zig, the mystical space rat from the sun. <laughs> yep, I feel like I've committed myself to more more of this and uh cannot cannot wait. I just committed, you know. Right. Who remembers what happened last time? Nope. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Uh, um, I, I could just use this session to listen to last sessions. Catch everything up. I mean, yeah. Anna <laughs> came. He, Was that not two sessions ago? No. No. Hell, well, yes, I'm not so technically so three. Technically three sessions ago. Yeah. But there was a lot of time between him actually speaking. <laughs> and. Yeah. yeah. Speaking? Mm -hmm. So, Hamari came. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. told him the Lord doing about the Queen. And he drank the Queen. He drank the Queen. <laughs> that was amazingly horrible. Um, he offered his goodies. Well, we found. We decided it. to wait for our goodies and. Because they weren't oh. in our path. It was, was with a reason. We found out bad things were definitely happening at Absalom. As suspected. Mm. A lot like happened, actually. A, a, a lot <laughs> happened, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Edgar done some things and then <laughs> left. <laughs> then <laughs> news escaped. <laughs> that was my favourite <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> How do we actually? I forgot about these. <laughs> right, so like, see if you put it into like perspective, where you're between dragons and like potential demons and angels and sp fucking space horrors, and you had trouble with a sp like a, a cube on your <laughs> ship. <laughs> Yeah, but that one was actually going to kill us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the danger. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so boxes save the day. <laughs> boxes. Wait, wait, boxes. Oh, I made a box. Is. You didn't did. It was a prey box. I guess we trapped these. We just went to bed and stuff. And then we ended up at Absalom and Colin, uh, Michael went bye bye. And oh crap! Yeah, space wizard went bye bye. Um, I love how Cam was like, "Did I?" <laughs> <laughs> Slugman. And mm -hmm. um, Slugman attorney was fucked. I think I just covered everything, and that's quite a lot of things that yeah, I just covered. It was. Yeah, that was uh, I th sure. Zig threw up, I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Radiant Supreme probably cleaned it up. Radiant Supreme cleaned it up. <laughs> it's very lovely of him before he leaves. Mm. How many days did we have between arrival? We had days to fill in with stuff, didn't we? Like. How many was it? I think it? it took six days to get to Absalom off the top of my head. Yeah, but like you used three of them, right? Or yeah. was this another yeah. jump? I think there was like another six. Yeah. Yeah, because we got arrested in, in the literal oh, sense. Oh yeah, we rolled. 
Road. Uh, I'll be in the chat log. Yeah. Because it'll be one of the last things we did, right? Uh, it's six, yeah. So there was six. Assuming that's what that's for. Yes, that's for the, the Shippy McShips ships. Mm -hmm. Jumping. The room. There we go. Yep, room above and ships below. <laughs> Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Yes. Session 25th. I go. Uh. Right, so, anything else happen? Worthy of note? I'm yeah. sure that was. Yeah, mostly just the war zone and then missing Lyco, really, isn't it? Yeah, Lyco's gone. It's very upsetting. The wind. Oop. Spirited away. Um, right, so goals. Now that we've done our recap. Sugoi. Let us review Zim. So we were still a bit un unsure of Resolve the Dry Queen's death and newfound royal goopiness. Like, that's sitting at resolve, resolved question mark. Because I think people seem to want more from that. Is that right? Or are we done with it? I, I feel like yeah. that is in itself sort of immediately resolved, but there are very... I feel like the consequences direct. from that... Yeah, and it's not like... So has it evolved, would you say? Yeah, possibly. Because um, we've still got to deal with um, what S. Kate wanted and... Yeah, yeah because my thing is, uh, it's not like... Um, the consequences we've still to deal with are things like far down the line spiralling off from this. It is pretty direct, right? So mm -hmm. it's like a, mm -hmm. the immediate consequences that we're still to or yet to deal with. So am I moving that in itself then to completed goals or are we evolving it into an, I like a new goal? Uh, I think it's essentially completed because like the consequences we could they really ascertain ourselves so it's like kind of impossible to make a goal with it if you know what I mean like, yeah so like the new what? goal I suppose is like go to SK cross that bridge when we come to it something like that well I mean that could See be a goal right reacts. it could be a goal is um, like check in with SK right yeah F find out her reaction to all of this shit mhm mm yeah mm. cause I mean that's probably problematic right <clears throat> yes it does indeed Potentially very problematic. Mm -hmm. I no. think at this point, MLO stuff is kind of <coughs> off the table, so who cares about her? <laughs> yeah, I can tell you exactly well, who cares about her. Uh, Mr. Mr. Westland. <laughs> what? So I mean, I do as well, but I figured it would have to Evelyn, obviously. But, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this, uh, like, I don't know if you're looking at That's the goals page or not, but I am. I am. So, within the goals page, let's update this so it's relevant for this week, because otherwise, obviously, levelling up becomes impossible. 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 So, what's the thoughts? Um, Got Hmm. Hmm. Sure. I, I, it's awful. I, I find like putting it into explicit wording is somewhat difficult. Yes. Mm. Yes. I think if we move Dry Queen's death and newfound royal goopiness as completed, and then when, as and when consequences from that happen, that's when that would become mm -hmm. considered as a goal. Because like as of now, it's not really like we're not going to go out of our way to be like right, okay. Now that we've done that, we should sort out all the potential um, issues that arise from dealing with the Queen in this way. Yeah, 
as I said, I think um, SK is probably a valid goal in some way as well as yeah. uh, I think whoever it was said. The question really is then, do you just want to proceed with a party goal or individual goals? Or just everything? What's the preference here? Because the party's goal at the, like in general, like as a player, because keep in mind this isn't what your characters want to achieve, this is what mm -hmm. you want to achieve for your character. So obviously I know Zig was about sorting out this shit with the Radiant Supreme and reconnecting with the party after the absence, blah blah blah. Um, then we've also got Lyco's gather info about the current situation on Absalom, aka the war. Um, you happy with that one still, Colin? Sorry, Hannah, I'm muted. Yeah, yeah. Um. Or do you want to update that to, I don't know, to like make contact with SK or something? Because you're technically probably in a better position to do that than they are at the moment. Um, but you can I leave it know. as is. I, I, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm really not quite sure. Oh, we can leave it as that one for now then, if you're not sure. Who's next? Talk to me. Goals me. Well, mine's of us figure out. I haven't done one, pretty sure. It's a personal goal. Well, we moved it up to uncover the fate of Emily Daly, that's under the main goal yeah. at the moment. Wait, well. Uh, hmm. Like, my media goal? Because mm -hmm. um. keep in mind, this is what you want to achieve as Nico for Zora. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, is it just sure. get Lyco back? Well, that'd be like his immediate goal, yeah, definitely. Like, and that's it then? Yep, don't need to think too hard about it. It's yeah, just, yeah, like, right. things to achieve. Yeah. Right, okay. So, with that, let's see. I've got one for Lyco. Ziggs is going to be interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I think I'll just say... Retrieve Lyco. This might be a good one. And then spill up the jump by reality bomb can we blast all <laughs> ships into the warp. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> So Aww. Yes. I'm I'm thinking what I might do then, right? So I had this thought there. We can have a goal each, and then mm -hmm. he's he's all promote one to the main goal, or whatever, and you just can focus on that, or however you want to do it. And when we achieve all of them, we'll level. I think that sounds like a plan for now, until future. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, at least that way you all get something you want to have done, and you don't level separately. You all, you know, need to chip in and help each other achieve the things you want to do as players. Because um, keep in mind, if somebody wanted to buy a new pair of blue sneakers, but someone else in the party were like, but my character would hate the fact that they're blue because my race sees blue as racist, then maybe that would be some kind of interesting dynamic to explore. And then it might become, convince this person that blue is not the colour they want for their sneakers, dot dot dot. You know, I don't mind if goals conflict so long as it makes an interesting story, you know. Mm. Or better ad living, who knows? But yeah, I think that's um, I think that's how I wanted to go. So with that in mind, uh, next you'll need a goal. I would like some blue sneakers, please. <laughs> At least we, did, we don't sell them; they were banned. Oh, the reason oh. was in the gap, yeah, but nobody knows. <laughs> but that doesn't stop me wanting them. That's why. No, um. <laughs> so you're a racist, are you now, father? <laughs> <laughs> I feel there's I mean, an irony there with me doing an Irish accent, right? Like, there's irony in there somewhere. 
but maybe just maybe just racism. Maybe just racism. Hard to tell. Um, but where yeah. are we going? Um, well, that's a good question, right? Where, what what is your plan? Like, what's like what is Alex's plan for Nix? I mean, Nix Five at the moment I would describe as a conflicted pacifist. <laughs> um. An embroiled in conflict pacifist is maybe the better term, but yeah. Yeah. But Fully he, equipped for the embroilment of said conflict. Hashtag pacifism. As he said last time, violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, we are incompetent. And, um. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, possibly, um. I think for him it's kind of trying to steer things away from arms dealers and uh, you know I think wanting to be part of a fight for something good right okay so not being a pawn is a, could, it, could it maybe be work out who the true enemy is work out who the true ally is like yep in the like in the specific situation you are in now, or like because by the specific situation I mean the the mess at Absalom, right? Yeah. Or do you mean specifically with Aspis? I think there's definitely a a friction with the business going on with Aspis. Mm -hmm. So um, how would you word that then for a goal? Then what would you like to? I guess it's it's probably. A, Align with the forces of good, or something. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that in itself is vague, but it could be yeah. align with the forces against Aspis, or it could be again that kind of f seek out. Because I mean, do you know who is good in this world? Right. It's a bit existential. Yeah. Um. But it could be so obviously alignment, etc. Um. It could mm. be so. What you put there is completely fine. Align with the forces against Aspis, or um, even just ally forces against, or rally forces against Aspis, maybe. Yep. Um, could be something like rally forces against Aspis. I think that would work. That sounds better, at least. Um, and it's great for a low charisma character. Yep, but it's like good for your <laughs> pilgrim background, right? Yes. <laughs> You're really pushing that pilgrim. Um, leave that pilgrim alone, and then. Um, I think what else we can do as well, because you could tie the Eskit into that, right? Mm -hmm. As well, that could be an avenue for you, considering you've got that kind of plot point of her floating around. Um, yeah, I don't know. I had a huge amount of interaction with her. No, so not much positive. No. Um, yeah, how do we think about that? Because that's I like what I've got yep. so far. I am um, right, Zig. You're next. Uh, what are we doing hey, yo. with your goal? What? How are we? How are we? I wouldn't say fix because that seems bad. But how are we fixing it? How are we fixing it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Obviously, the whole radiant supreme thing is a very long-term thing, so that can get the France Duke out of there. Yeah, you can shimmy it along your uh, your line here. Got it. Shine brighter than supreme. Become the supremacist. That, that's that. Did that you see what I I bolded? <laughs> did I like it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then your I'm not goal. Racist, I swear. So your goal is reconnect with party after years absence in the catch up. Yeah, kind of. There's there's a lot of like sort of kind of catching up to do because obviously Zig's been gone for a year, mm. but to Zig he's been gone for substantially less time. So there's that sort of weird gap of um, everyone being that sort of year further down the road. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So there needs that. There, there's. I feel like there would need to be some sort of like reconnecting because it'd be kind of weird. Like if you 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 like met up with them, um, some person you haven't seen in a year, and they're literally exactly the same as they were. Well, a year ago. Yeah, or if somebody just happens to be frozen in time for a year, and then yeah, you yeah. age and have a life, like, and that year, and they wake up going, "Oh, hey," as we were saying. And you're like, what? Yes. <laughs> that was a year ago, bro. Um, yeah. Right, so what would let you know that's achieved, though? Do you know what I mean? I hadn't thought that far ahead. <laughs> mm. You've had this whole year 
to catch up on. I've had a whole year to think of this. Well, no, I haven't. I've only had like. I don't even know how long it is. A couple days? Well, just over a week, I guess. Yeah. Um. So. Think about that, right? Because we need to obviously try and work out how we can achieve it. Because that definitely is goal worthy. I just don't know if that's just the right. Just kind of wording it to a completed. State. Yeah, to an achievable Spring thing. State yeah. For that, yes. Think of quest text. What would the quest text be? You know, when you go into your journal after you forgot what the quest text was, and it gives you the sentence summary. You know. Um, Deliver the three golden eggs to Nix Five. Yep. Uh, just three gold Nix Five. <laughs> I will take them. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Complete. Right. With that yeah. in mind, then let's um, let's decide. So I think main goal is uncover the fate of Emma Daly. I think that's that. I'll still leave that as the main goal. I'm just going to leave S. Kate's name up the name up there as well because, like, I feel like it's still a, a, a point of interest if nothing else. Um, and yeah. I don't know if there's much point in talking about whose goal we're going to pursue first. I feel like they're all in play until like mm -hmm. one of them seems most appropriate. Because I don't want to start doing a you slot in one goal to achieve and then somehow the narrative makes perfect sense for somebody else's goal to achieve. I don't want to get locked into that nonsense. So uh, yeah, let's go with what we've got so far. Um, do you just want to colour code yourselves in easy to read colours in this as well for me? Maybe just the colour she's using there. Uh, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> just scoring them out. Obviously for the folks at home, we're in an Excel sheet, so welcome to seeing nothing for 20 minutes. Um, oh yeah. That's okay, we appreciate all of our listeners. Um, Alex doesn't appreciate me, obviously, or my eyesight. Oh wow. Oh. It stands out. That's very that, that that those words are tripping me out. That's really ooh. I'm gonna zoom in for a second. Hold on. <laughs> I zoom in. Gonna have a good time. Oh <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> ooh, there we go. Ah, see if I look away, I can still see the letters. <laughs> oh, ow. Are we just going to give the, the Vesk green, or...? Is Zig still your orange? Oh, do you want the orange? Okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go something else, it's fine. I'm salted. <laughs> I for one like this new goal system, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> it burns. You're welcome. The reason I want them colour-coded is when we complete them. I want the log to be color coded. Nico, mm -hmm. are you gonna color code? I'm trying. I'm trying to find something. I found it now. I found it. Good. Oh man, it's still right. You know what? I'm leaving this page. My eyes are getting really <laughs> sore. I'm sorry. It's Oof. okay. You have your fun. <laughs> I will. God, all of her eyes. <laughs> you leave well, all of her eyes. This is against Aspus. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Apparently. Um, Perfection. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. But yeah. <laughs> well then, um, I'll see if I de if I unlike focus my eyes, it becomes more in focus and easier to read. <laughs> it's okay. Next will eventually um, write everything, and everything will be fine. Right. Next. <laughs> right. Right. Totally. Right. Yep, yep. Good. Um, as for that though, let's get stuck in, shall we? Yes. Let's do it. Indeed. So. Like they do. Oh, sorry. Go. Okay. <laughs> Indeed. Thank so you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have um, the opening shot of like a kind of serene 
cityscape with like the star field in front of them and then you just hear the kind of muted kind of sound of weapons fire hitting off like an energy bubble and it's this big kind of city ship uh, that's sitting outside Asp uh, Aspis, fair enough, the Absalom station and we've got the shot from inside the bubble looking out and then we see this tiny glint of light just like pop in out of the, the drive space at the far side of the uh, this battlefield where all this kind of weapons fire smacking into the shields and then the camera does that shaky pan all the way over um, and we go through the cockpit window we bypass Alice of course and uh, yeah we focus back in on the crew of the 11th hour Sons Lyco Ah, scroll down. Yep. So let me get rid of Lyco. And put yourselves where you would be. Yeah. I'm lost. <laughs> you'd be there. I think you'd be here. Lyco. Yes. Um, like I'm just gonna put you in the cargo bait just now, right? Just just for now. Just until. You've been mm -hmm. canned, boxed, something like lines. Hide him under the eye. <laughs> I still see you. Uh, Zig, where did you go? Like, I feel like you were in the Radiant Supreme room just I was so. in the Radiant Supreme room. There we go. Yes, sorry. Perfect. Right, okay, so. Apologies. We just have. Um, I think as the camera zooms into the cockpit and does that nice transition through the glass, we just see Zora smack his fist, and he loses her fist, Zack is smack his fist on the control panel to disable the drive. And then the the camera pans all the way through the ship and we just see Nix 5 kicking or punching the engine, whatever one it was, I think it was kicking. So uh, yes. Giving a good hit either way. Yeah. It I, deserved uh, it. Any frustration. So what's everyone up to? Hmm. Call. Next. Let's see. Sorry about that. Um. Lyco kind of vanished. But we didn't. What are we doing, Captain? Lyco vanished. <laughs> I understand, but we're in the middle of a war zone. Absolutely, but what if we jump and Lyco can't get it? I understand that, Captain, so what shall we do? At least pull away to a safe distance and I'll look at Alice. <laughs> Alice looks at the map and then just kind of waves vaguely at the star map around Absalom as if, please, tell me where safe distance is. <laughs> <laughs> And then she adjusts the spork in her holographic hair and then she starts Aww. tapping on the old uh, control panel and uh, the ship just slowly reverses and for a comedic effect we just hear beep, beep, <laughs> beep but like really really quiet and muted because it's obviously an alarm that's probably going off because of all the crap in front of you being like an Aeoxian fleet. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, right. Alice. Captain? Try it. Just keep on reversing. <laughs> and try and get in touch with Lyco. And what am I trying. telling Lyco when I get in touch with Lyco? I'll try and find out where he is. He's not on that thing, hopefully. Pointing at the big thing, obviously. The when you say the big thing, Absalom Station, the fleet, or the, like the, the city? The city. Right, okay. I mean, that, that's I've seen fleets before. Cities are something different. 
Yeah, I mean, like, even the city ship, the, like, the Adari, the one that the, uh, the Cassathans have, um, looks like a huge ship, right? As opposed to a city. Um, like, there's a piece of art that reflects this not too terribly. I'll find that and I'll share it to you guys in a wee second, wherever I've put this piece of art. Um, but yeah, so Alice just kind of like nods and goes, I will try my best. And just kind of nods at you. Nod. Nod. And then I think uh, like as you go to leave, she says, Captain, it has just occurred to me. Yes. What if we attract attention by doing this? Uh, just... We'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. <laughs> okay. And she just kind of nods, like, resolutely, you know? Like we're getting back our man. Good. Good. She understands. Yep. Yep. Sometimes it's okay to lie to your <laughs> crew. <laughs> she understands. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. Wasn't one of these moments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's totally fine. Don't worry. Totally fine. Um, but yeah. So, do you head out of the cockpit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where are you off to? Uh, I don't even know. What do we do in this situation? <laughs> I mean, well, you've committed yourselves to the situation. I mean, yeah, that's a given. <laughs> mm. um, Alex, do you happen to know how long the drive takes to cool down? Not Nix, I'm not asking Nix, I'm asking Alex. <laughs> um, I do not. Let me see if I can use this magic. This new compendium? <laughs> yep. Also, um, shout out to Scott Casey for the character sheet. Yes, Thank you, well Scott. Done. You've done something magnificent and made everyone's lives easier. Unlike the rest of us. <laughs> Harsh but fair. How <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, does... What's it called? Jump. Here we go. This is the. I should probably put this in our art one, but it looks a bit like that if that was a spaceship. I'll dump that in character art. It's a very cool piece of art, actually. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Might just save that. <laughs> Add to pile. That one folder of art that I never open on my computer. <laughs> I have like six folders of art and they're all for like different games and none of them have any kind of order to them and I always tell myself I'll fix it. I never do. Because why would you, you know? Right. Games could be considered an art, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or is art just one big game? Roll20 refused to connect. Okay, that's fine. Okay, um, we'll deal with that issue, I guess, later. Then. Yes. Brilliant. Um, <coughs> I'll look in the compendium and see if I can find something for it. Rules. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, space travel would be a thing that they would have as a rule. You'd think. But yeah. So, w where do you go? When you leave the cockpit, you still haven't answered me yet. I don't think. I have not. Um, I would call Nix, I guess, again, and say, um, so is there any way to get the drive cooled down any faster? Um. I think that's where next first ones. There was. We set it up for that. Uh, at the moment, I can see what I'll do, but 
I feel that we need to make plans, assuming we can't jump away. I would nod, but you can't kind of see that. But I would just nod out of the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Next five wouldn't have been waiting for a response anyway. That's. That'd be fine. Um, so this. Drifting. Mm. So how does. Lyco just disappear? Any Appar ideas on that? Apparently, <laughs> like when you enter or exit the drift, uh, it must remain stationary with its conventional thrusters turned off for at least a minute. It doesn't say then you jump back into the drift, but it does tell me at least there is at least a minute cooldown. Oh, from the space travel section. Which is at least something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, what is the plan then, Captain? <laughs> hmm. How do we find Lyco? Well, they in this situation as well. Mm. Remember there was that horrible garbled mess on the comms last time, so yes. Alice yes. is going to need a bit of time with that. Hmm. Also, looking for somewhere to park at the edge of the space is also tricky. I can imagine. Because it is just, I'll just be backing out of the room now. <laughs> it's fine. Let's get some distance, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's like a, a decent distance anyway. Like they would need to like break off from where they are to specifically come get you guys from the jump point. It's unlikely. It's almost as if that city ship has just appeared and slowly moved closer to the station, and thus they've engaged. Okay. Okay. Um. Mm. Would do we have scanners on this thing? Is there any way that we could kind of like scan for like oh? Is that a thing? Remember we discussed that like scanning for life forms is the worst thing to do when you're looking for Lyco? That's true, but that's maybe a, a, a good old like a half dead man. <laughs> well, he is undead, and you're trying to be scanning through how many undead on the Oxian fleet? Like at least five, right? He's got one of the ganglia things, right? We could just leave <laughs> it for the ganglia. He has one of those ganglia things. We'll just scan for the. G Do you, you don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't even know what it is exactly. <laughs> like Zora doesn't even know that he has that. <laughs> Only Nico knows. <laughs> Uh, I don't even think fucking Nico knows to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom Basil Ganglia? I'm not entirely convinced either, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so, while all this commotion's happening, Zig, let's focus on your old Nick, uh, Nico even panics, I should say. So. Um. Well, being alone, mm -hmm. I think he would probably just go and. Um, try and find somebody to talk to. Uh, right, would you go back to the cockpit or would you go to... You know? I think he'd, had, he'd start like searching in the like the cockpit. He'd assume that well, I like, think, if, like, if something was happening. I think if he walks, if you walk out of the room, you're gonna just like mm -hmm. see the captain. Because I think Zora is just standing there kind of paralysed with like what what's next. Because you're calmed to next, so... Yeah, yeah. That's fine. He's gonna run out if he if he clocks the captain, then he'd then um, mm -hmm. probably just go up to the captain and be like, mm -hmm. "So, w what's happening, captain?" Oh, uh, like who disappeared, vanished, just vanished. We were gonna jump it, but then I stopped the drive. Then the drive was killing down. There's a war outside. Lots of things have happened. <laughs> How would you? When you say vanished, do you mean <laughs> transported somewhere else? Or, like, just... Um, didn't see. Just vanished. I assume we just got transported somewhere. 
people don't just okay. vanish. Well, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure people have just vanished a couple of times in like this campaign, but that's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so feel sorry for those two security guards, but yeah. Would immediately not assume, but kind of because his head's brain go to maybe um, the Radiant Supreme, like might have accidentally vanished um, Lyco along with him. Um, Doesn't so I think he would take. Um, Dicks like that much? Probably not, but you know, Zig's now realizing he's not like an almighty man. <laughs> Ah, uh, he's just and doubting them now. Being, he's he's doubting, doubting everything that crosses. Right, right, right. So I think I think Zig would probably try and find some sort of like mystical residue or something that would um, indicate that Michael was also taken away by the same um, mystical take away age magic that that Radiant Supreme used earlier. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. I'm really full of gas. So like <laughs> the mist it's magic. The mysticism nonsense is what you're going for. Ah. Yeah. Cool. Indeed. That's the fine. Yeah, like, do you have anything that actually lets you do that besides, like, your actual connection with the Radiant Supreme? Let me see. Probably not, actually. Like, what spells Other have you got? than. Detect magic. <laughs> mm. The classic. Um, I think that's about it. Everything else I've got is just gnarly stuff. I mean, if you have that, that would be useful. Okay, I do. So I detect some magics. Mm. Yes. Boo doop. I'm just reading the text just now because there's a lot of text. I'm reading the text too. There is a lot of text. You know, actually, it would only take a minute to boot up again. But we need to have our thrusters off while we do that. Is it like, okay. does it actually say it? Because I thought it just said the thrusters needed a minute before they would work after the drive. But like, there's no restriction on the drive. It's just that. The thrusters don't work. <laughs> yeah, we need to turn the thrusters off for a minute before entering. Okay. Um, and then basically, I think what happens is the drift drive jumps you into the drift. Mm -hmm. And then you use your thrusters to navigate in the drift. Yeah. So you need to turn them back on. Um, so yeah, we would have to basically float around in this war zone without thrusters for a minute. Okay. Um, okay. This is a trade off. That's fine. They're currently reversing anyway, so yeah. Uh, right. So Zig, if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna do this, uh, yeah. Where are you focusing? Um, I'd probably focus on the the cockpit area because um, I assume that's where. Well, I, we were all in the cockpit. I assume Michael didn't follow me out of the cockpit. Um. Right through, and yeah, so definitely feels like Michael was a uh, transported uh, away, but not by anything remotely like the Radiant Supreme. It's not okay. like like this feels almost the inverse of what you felt from the room. So kind of more of like a, a tearing away as opposed to a... Yeah, instead of like walking away it was stolen away. Yeah. Yeah. A pulling instead of a pushing. You know? Yes. Yes. I... Do you keep concentrating on it or do you let it drop? I think I'd concentrate for like a couple minutes just to... Mm -hmm. Um kind of determine as much as I could without, you know, sitting there for before, you know, kind of just the his mind starts to wander onto something else. Yeah. Also Alex, you're breathing very heavily. Sorry. We, we hear you. 
<laughs> we get it. <laughs> Just that you're super <laughs> super into his detect magic rule. And then um, I will stop reading. That's fine. A little random car zooming past. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, like say you're standing there for another couple of minutes. Then because I think it's five minutes total. I think isn't it? Because it's, it's one five minute. minutes total. It's yeah. a minute per level. So and uh, yeah, like Alice is the brightest thing in the room to you. Oh, okay. Definitely seems That's like a, the equivalent of a hybrid item. Okie dokie. Oh. Mm. Wow, that yeah. wasn't a hint or anything. Mm. <laughs> is, it, is it okay? <laughs> I don't think I was like, is it? No? <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, a hybrid item is obviously yeah. technology and magic. Yes. I, I assumed as much. Yeah, so it means that you're not just getting a tech reading from her because you wouldn't get mm -hmm. that. You're yeah, you're getting a very very magic reading from her. I think I think this, I don't think Zig would really say anything of that. He'd kind of look over, um, probably take a step towards her, mm -hmm. and just kind of look her up and down, and um, kind of gawk. A little bit. Yeah, she's um, she's busy pouring through code on the kind of uh, panel in front of her, and it looks like she's trying to, like, filter out all of the kind of background noise. If you will, you can't really tell what she's actually doing. You just know that she looks like she's highlighting segments of code and like isolating them to the side, and then uh, writing mm. her own code in place of the stuff she's deleting. I think it would kind of tap on the back of the leg, I guess. I don't. I can't. I can't remember how tall Alice is. Oh, she's uh, sitting down in the chair. Oh, she's sitting down. I'll probably just tap her knee. Yeah. Tap, 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 tap. Like, I don't think she's really like the type of person that would move for that. She's still working mm -hmm. away. Like, so unless you actively engage her, she probably wouldn't really climb up onto her knee and look at her in the face. And then, <laughs> if you're sitting on her knee, just staring into her face, it's probably very, very close. She's like, "You are. Yes. It would be difficult to proceed with you on my lap." Mm hmm. And then she leans back in the chair and like puts her hands on like the armrests. Um, but you kind of just sat there, and then she said, "Do you want to help?" Sure. And then she kind of like moves you to this side like a kid sat on Santa's knee. And then she leans forward with her arm around you and she starts like putting all the code and just talking in techno babble to you. Okay. Um, and if you want, you can roll computers if you want to. Sure. See how well see you work how out. See how little I actually. Um, or, I mean, you, you might get a good chunk of it. What I might do is have her roll to see uh, how well she explains it. It's alright, it's alright, let's see how well she it's explains it. Just the lucky roll. <laughs> let's see, well we'll see if it's lucky. Yeah, well, uh, we'll see. Where is Alice's stats? Alice, roll computers for me. Right, okay. Now, like, she explains it probably, again, a lot of it's above your head. Um, mm -hmm. She rolled a 34, by the way, total. Uh, so, you get that she's trying to get rid of stuff that's in her way, is the gist, and you're not necessarily... In fact, roll sense motive. We'll see if you think she's saying you're in her way. Sense motive, what's that? It's there. <laughs> you can decide. Um, you're not sure if she means she's trying to get stuff out of the way so that she can work, or that that you're the stuff that's now in her way and she was a, she was trying to be polite and subtle 
Um, I think Zig would definitely assume that. Mm-hmm. And um, sit there and be like, oh, oh, okay. And then kind of like hop down mm-hmm. and just kind of like pat her knee a wee bit and then run back to the captain. Okay, yeah. Uh, Zora, in the meantime, five minutes later, what did you do? Did you just stand there for five minutes or? Zora. You're muted, Nico. Still muted. Super muted, in fact. Super mute. Nico! Ah! <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! <Yep. laughs> I think a little bit of poop came out. Oh, nice. Oh! But of where? These are the Nico. questions we never want answered. The room. Uh, Nico, are you still with us? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Ah, there we go. So, five minutes Greetings. of Zig casting spells and scanning the cockpit and sitting on Alice's knee later. What did you do? Did you. Like. Um. You got five minutes to kill. Did you, did you go in and wait? Just standing in the doorway? Or did you... I, I was probably definitely observing Zig and his antics, because okay. I... Well, I think when Zig jumps off... I don't do mysticism stuff. <laughs> I think we've clarified <laughs> <laughs> You have? You've got a good go, though. Um, so yeah, Zig, you go to like run up to the door, you push the button on the door, the door opens and the captain's just standing there. All right. I, mean, okay. I, I was probably starting with a door open. I was just starting with a door in my face. Yeah, I like the idea that you're looking through the, the cockpit window. Uh, oh no, well, I guess that's my, uh, I don't know if I can, I don't think the door like that. I thought it would have been just a solid door. I mean, it's your ship. <laughs> the doors are how you wish them to be. <laughs> <laughs> some have windows, uh, some don't. I mean, if you want a cockpit window, you can have a cockpit window. A, 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 a door window. Uh, but yeah, so Zig's. Either way, Zig runs to the door and you're in his face. Right, yeah. I think Zig would say, um. Any luck? <laughs> Somebody's stolen Michael. <laughs> the ocular, the ocular roll, like, and sigh. It's like, oh, why, why always us? <laughs> Two distant screams in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think I think Zig like, would try and explain like the the differences between like the feeling of when somebody chooses to transport themselves mystically and when someone's taken away and he'd um just kind of babble at him about how well, you know, when you want to leave somewhere you kind of feel that sort of warmth and you kind of just wander and um sort of dispense yourself away. Whereas he's kind of been ripped and torn and it's kind of stolen from the little spot that he was in. You know, when you try and pick up a cat, this is Calm speaking now. When you try and pick up a cat and they don't want to move and they take their claws into the thing and it's like, Wah! and then you ruin right. your duvet cover and it's like, yeah. I think that could even say you've just been Zig talking, to be honest. Actually, yeah, we, that could be Zig, <laughs> sure. Right. It's like when 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 my mom used to pick me up and then I <laughs> dig my claws into the bed and <laughs> ruin my thing. I like don't want to go to a space school. <laughs> I don't want to go to space school. I'm probably clutching at straws here, right? Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it anyway. Um, and it's also me, maybe maybe slightly met Anne as well. We'll, we'll come to that when we get to it. You can tell me, no, Nico, stop that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, would I have ever heard in the past, like, recounts of how it, like, it feels to get slammed by um, a, what are they called, bone sages, like, spells? Yeah. By maybe some other vest people. Remember the Obsidian Star faced a... Yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering if I could have got yeah. any like, recounts, because I'm sure I didn't get hit by Wangs with the one shot me. Let's face it at that ro- point, ro- but... Roll culture. Culture. Okay. Well, I'll be a cheeky profession. Sure. <laughs> That's <I'm> not one! <laughs> <laughs> That's very cheeky. <laughs> No! Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Can you roll culture uh, and tell? Can we just have a culture roll to see what would have been? 
Oh, Here's the prize you could have had. <laughs> Here's the prize I could have had. So, do you want to just carry on? I think you know the rule, so just carry on. Uh, that was just such a good way to <laughs> kind of figure out where it went as well, man. Uh, that's what I. Yeah. <laughs> I think at as this I point, said, you know, the, the mentioned. Well, as I was saying, sorry, the Obsidian Star like have like faced a bone sage, and uh, then they left very quickly. Very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, like worm holding away. Ah, uh, so annoying. Um, damn it. Mm. Well, that goes my idea. <laughs> <laughs> And Sig's still babbling. He's he's moved on to, you know, when you choose to leave, it's kind of like the warmth, the kind of the, the sun kind of radiates within the, the your your mystical. Um, but where you get taken away, it's like when you're left and the sun's been blotted out, and it's like cold and dark, and it's you've gone to the far end of the universe where the sun's warmth can't reach you. <laughs> and a little tear like appears in the corner of his eye, and he's. I think as well, like the, the camera does that thing where it clicks to like an external shot where we see the ship and just that slow beeping noise. Um, but like Zig's voice rambling over the top of that, <laughs> and it clicks back into you pinching the bridge of your nose, <laughs> which is hard to do because it's just like you with a, a face palm, really, given how wide the vest nose is. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the the more Zig starts babbling, the kind of more excitable he's getting. He starts gesticulating more, um, oh. and then um, yeah, yeah. Mm. What about next? What's next doing? Um, what is next doing? Um, I mean the engine will be fine. Um, I think recognizing what's going on, probably. Actually, just checking that guns and everything are in order. Um, I think. Just setting up, basically? Yeah, I think it's kind of assuming that we are going to be. Uh, <laughs> something's going to happen. Um, right, if he's got that feeling, mm. as happens in this party, uh, that things are about to start exploding. Mm. Um, I think. Obviously, he hasn't a clue what's going on through there. Um, Probably for the best. I like the idea that maybe, you, yeah. you, he, like the captain, had never actually hung up his calm and you heard the whole thing, but you just ignore it because you know it's <laughs> not to do with you. <laughs> yeah, because I think he's probably got a plan in place to get some sort of uh, technical solution to the problem. Hmm. Um, probably trying to enhance some sensors or something. Yeah, okay. Um, and some comms to break through to Lyco. But before that, before he goes attracting attention, of teleporters. <laughs> yeah, gear up. Yep, it's a good plan. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like you've already been saying that we could come in the oxygen fleet. Just, just getting out of there. Was that sorry? I'm a bit too saying that we could just come in the oxygen fleet. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, how do you know, Alice? You go back in. She's like one of those uh, switchboard operators, and she's like, and then he did this, and I couldn't believe it. So we all had cake, but I don't eat cake, so I just got my suit a mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, right. What would you like to do as we we cut out of the... What's the plan for the ship? So I know you are working on something. So I know that next five is going to go and suit up, essentially, in every way possible. Yeah, it'll take a couple of minutes to suit up, but then he probably walks straight back into the cockpit and oh. uh, to the computer. Okay. Just past them all and starts uh, trying to cut through to Lyco again. So does Zoro or Zig say anything uh, when Nyx just walks past? And I think I'd just say um, Lyco's been stolen. By who? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, scratch we don't know. Head. I'm so upset I don't know why. So upset. <laughs> <laughs> so upset man. Like it wouldn't even been that hard a check. Not even to roll it in, but like 
It's in your background. Oh, it's like, so annoying. Like there's a year's <laughs> worth of Lyco talking to you potentially about Sindai Hill. Like, aye. Oh, See if we had story points or something in this, you could just have spent a story point to know it. Like, I'd have loved that. <laughs> I think I'll go with that rhyme. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to spend a resolve point? Um, what sort of thing? I don't know. I, do that? I mean, it's costing you something, right? You can you can spend a resolve point to have. So long as a uh, Lyco doesn't mind having sp- have spoke to you a bit more about Sindale in that year. Uh. Hmm. See, I'm not. What would I actually have said that would be necessarily useful here? Maybe something like, I'm really sick of when he needs me, he just makes me appear. Have we established that that's the thing that happens previously though? I mean, do you want that to have been something that happened previously? I- I'm neutral. Yeah, then he's not helping you here, uh, Zora, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, Sorry, it, it can be. No, like... no, I'm not really... This isn't uh... something that I, I necessarily thought. Mm. I don't know that Lyco knew that. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. Mm. I mean, that- we could make a roll for it, like maybe to determine. Well, like a kind of how much you would have spoke to Zora about this. Yeah, like, I don't know what, what I would roll for that, like, well, well, even how much, like, I know, like, we, uh, you know, if, if we have a... But what about a, per, a conversation, a roll, a diplomacy from the captain, and a, what is that, a charisma save from you? Sure, if you like, yeah. Right, just want to do that? Right, Zora, you roll, I believe it's diplomacy, because there's no persuasion, right? Which is uh, again? Will? Will, no... Let's see. What have you got? What's your saves? It would be Will, I guess, wouldn't it? For Ref and Will. What's Ref again? That's Reflex. So it ain't reflex. that. It's, that's, yeah, that's it's not literally got. dodging the question by diving into another room. <laughs> it's a legit tactic. Yeah, agreed. If it works, it works. <laughs> it works. It's a four. Right, okay. Alright, okay. And. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'd I say guess you have the answers you need. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was going to be something along the lines of, obviously, Lyco has been doing a lot of. What's the word? Hmm. Freelancing, out with the crew, and then every time you came back, obviously you got more and more of Sindael's patches on you. You know, you're obviously. Okay. Your your. Your Boy Scout badges grew the collection. And then um, eventually, like, maybe the captain said something along the lines of, I need to know what you're getting into, if it affects the crew, blah, 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 yeah. etc. Yeah, I, c- I can see how it would have come mm-hmm. up. I was just not entirely certain myself, because we didn't really... That's okay, I just, I'm just i just using this as a way of establishing some how it actually happened lines. Mm-hmm. Um, I can believe that, so just want to... Do you maybe hash out exactly what you sort of shared then, just now, in a wee, um, or a wee chat just now then? Yeah... Um, so here's the question, because this this is going to go into the what happened in the in the sort of missing year territory, which I haven't really fleshed out fully yet. Yeah, but it's forever. It's near the start of it, at least, because it's um, as and when you start to become more used by Sindel, it would be to the point where the captain would be like, "Wait, are you going to be doing this? Do I need to so know stuff?" Some, okay, so if like if it's something that's established that. This is something which may happen again in future. Mm-hmm. Then I think it would be uh, something that Lyco would inform the captain of, just as like, uh, you know, uh, what's what's the phrase like, sort of, um, like as a caveat, as a sort mm-hmm. of, you know, be aware that mm-hmm. this may come up. That I don't necessarily have control over where I am, when I am uh, pulled away in these missions. E.g., it could happen sort of near instantaneously without my even necessarily having a say. So you know. Yeah, Sindael's uh, way of calming people is taking them, speaking to them, and sending them back. 
<laughs> so yeah. It's a very imposing man. <laughs> He's a strange thing. Right, so... So yeah, you, you, you know that it could well be, and I suppose, you know, with what what's ahead of us, you can probably put three and three together and get eggs. Yeah. Uh, golden ones, of course. Oh, of course. Now, still yeah. spend that resolve point, though, because I still feel like it is... Ah, I've got, I've put them in five. Good man. Um, but no, that's good. It's at least an establishing point. So maybe, maybe at this point you're, like... My brain's like, clicked. Yes, yeah, I think it's maybe when Nix5 says, who took him? And you're like... Hmm. Wait a minute. Then we have a flashback to you sitting with Lyco, like we just had. <laughs> Wait, I just playing it as a flashback. Is that thing? You just did. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> as soon as like he says who took Lyco, I probably just hear like the ocular, the ocular scream. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just play. Oh, of course. It's the Oxians. And you look out the cockpit and you see the, all of the Oxians and you think, the clues were there. <laughs> but like, you have rolled terribly at looking at the ships and it, yeah, actually, it see anything what? to do with you understanding the Oxians? No? It's a wormhole it's situation. It's a wormhole situation. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> all you were taught by the Obsidian Star. If you come in contact Wait, with the Oxians, it's a wormhole situation. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Wormhole, get the hell out! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you would just you would hear the penny drop for like the other side of the ship. Somebody <laughs> else is on board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, it's the Oxians. Mm -hmm. The Oxians, the ones that are fighting. Uh, like has been working with a bone sage. For the past why, few months. Why do we always work for the wrong people? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what next. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> LEDs blink slowly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, we, we, we definitely attract good crowds. Um. Also, see for that like comment there as well, the LEDs blink. I think maybe it's like you spin around in the chair and your hands are on like your kind of thighs, just kind of very passively, and you're just staring and you blink that once. Mm -hmm. um, also, see like the white LED light that's all over your hands? Um, mm -hmm. I'd say that's probably up like your forearms by now, considering we have had a year. Uh, it's spreading. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that I know it's the auctions, would it be possible to try to hack into their fleet and rig um, try to piggyback off their comms. Well, okay. Uh, like use that. them as a relay almost? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To send the signal within their ships. Mm -hmm. So use their comms essentially to relay back to the station? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Not going to be easy, but it's definitely uh, interesting. If I could give inspiration for an idea. <laughs> um uh, be a computer checker. <laughs> Hack the evil guys. <laughs> yeah. What is the average party level? Five? Yep. So, if this so. is a difficult challenge, it is 20 plus one or a half. I hate that minus sign. I really hate it. Uh -huh. One, two, one and a half times APL. So, I'd say that you attempt to, you, you start the kind of process, but you realise mm. that because uh, you don't just like you actually just just fail it by like what three or four, mm -hmm. and you fail it by four. Yeah. Um, while you're tapping away, you realise that half of the code that you would normally use to do it, like it just isn't connecting to them at all. Um, mm. And then you open up why it isn't connecting to try and troubleshoot that, and you realise that half the code is either deleted or like. Um, segmented away. Uh, so we've been hacked. Uh, you could make that assumption, yeah. Yep. Uh, someone's got to us first, Captain. I can fix it, but it'll take a while. Um, given that I've figured that out, also, would it be a matter of time to rebuild it? <laughs> does Zora reply, or is Nico muted? 
I did. I told everybody. I said, "God oh, damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like Nico would have said, "God damn it," and uh, we yeah. didn't get that. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is. So God damn it. You just get that Nico's muted tingling sense. <laughs> um, that Maratashi's name, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> By the <nothing>. devourer. <laughs> <laughs> Call the devourer upon me. Uh, right, so safety assumed that like was out of our grasp at this moment in time. Then, uh, I'll give if we have some time, I can get through it. Yeah. Cool. So, and I think uh, as you were talking about, Alex goes, I am working on it, Captain. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. <laughs> what, what are we working on, Captain? Uh, try get keep on trying to get through to the auctions. Keep on, <laughs> keep I thought, on. I thought you said speak to Lyco. What? Oh, the, oh the crap! Well, Alice is speaking. <laughs> uh, I, I meant I was speaking. I, I was looking at Nix when I said that. Yeah, but Alice is still saying what she says. Oh, uh, just you hold off on that for now, Alice. You're probably not going to be getting through. You. And she kind of just like puts her hands out to the side, like kind of in shock. Like, you could at least let me try. I mean, if you feel like you can, <laughs> go for it. And she kind of like thumbs towards you're her chest, it. and she's like, "I might not make it through this as just as much as you might not make it through this." And she like thumbs out the window, like so. If you're going to waste my time, let me waste it my way. Get the finger cut. Like, there's like a very, there's a very Lyco sound to the way she inflects all that. Okay. Um, so, I'll just nod and say, so yeah, right, you do that. <laughs> Keep on going. And she finger guns you. Staring at Alice through that whole exchange. Okay. Oh yeah, because you're between the two of them, <laughs> just yeah. looking up between Alice and that. Um, yeah, what's th what's the plan? Is Nick's going to have another go, or yeah, I think I'd take another crack at that. Yeah, having a go. Yep. I don't know. If... You repeat on that. You're correct. Exactly the same. <laughs> wow. I think. I think. You go back, knowing what you know, obviously you're like, right, cool, there's a hack in place, I'll try and do a workaround for that, cool. And then you do exactly what you would do to fix that problem, because I imagine it's probably happened in the past where you've had to block people like trying to, you know, hack in yep. and maybe shut down air supply or nonsense like that. And then uh, it still doesn't work because like half of your codes are missing now. Um, okay. Like, so programs you would have built up to run and macros and such are just to, like not there. Or like okay. when you run them, they break like a character sheet. I don't, I don't know anything about that. No, neither do I. Uh, um. So, I think it's about this time. Would it be a benefit to if I hook up the extra cortex and my own personal computer for that extra power, and like I guess pull from the backups? Yeah, so, I mean, it would definitely help. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I just don't know if using a computer to help does anything. Don't know. Although Doesn't your exocortex help? My exocortex does, yes. And it basically gives me a second um, action's worth at the same time. Okay. And so is it the same action, or can it help? Or, like, how does that work? So, in theory, can it give you the helping rule? Uh, allowing it to make a computer check against that computer each round using your skill bonus. So in theory, so yeah, it, it's just it, it could do the... Check it, yeah, because there is a helping mechanism, right, in this game, so... Yeah. yeah. Somebody rolls, gets a certain level, then adds a bonus to you, right? Yep. Cool. So. Do you want to have that, like, help you out then? Do you want to make it its rule first? I don't know what the actual helping rules are anymore. I did know. Exo helper. 
at 21. Oh my Bullshit. god, amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that might be enough to help though, right? <laughs> no, but genuinely though, like, isn't the, the helping rule like you need to make a certain checkpoint? Yeah, let me have a quick I point. think it is, yeah. Skills. Um, skills. I think it's a fairly simple rule, to be honest, as well. If you remember, right? I generally can't think what it actually is, though, but. Uh, Assist. Let me see. Uh, to do so, you must attempt your skill check before. Uh, succeed at a DC 10 check, that creature gains a plus 2. Well, you got a plus 2, definitely. Yes. That was easy. Yep. See? It's competent enough to match exactly your skill. Perfect. So you got a plus 2 on this next one. And I have 31 anyway. <laughs> So, 33 though, so right? 33. Yes. Yeah, cool. Um, right. Now, you plug in your stuff, your exocortex starts to help, and then you and it obviously exchange the dialogue that is, why are things missing? And uh, it highlights that you've seen this type of code before, and it's when you were looking at Alice's coding. Mm-hmm. So it looks like Alice has deleted half the things that you needed, or moved them, or broke them. Okay. So I'll take notes. Yeah. yeah, but you have the ability to send a message piggybacked through a an Aeoxian ship. You just don't have the skill to hide it. Okay. But you can force a message through. And it would bounce obviously to a recipient on Absalom. Do you have any code words we'd have set up as a party? Oh god, oh god, why? <laughs> 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 That's to let you know everything's fine and just as planned. <laughs> um. Hmm. Right, you tell me Should what. Are, probably would have what are you, are you looking for? Before. Right, Alex, you t you talk to me about what you're looking for. I'm trying to think of something that we could say to Lyco that would let him know what our plan is. Um, Instead of telling possibly the Holy Oxian fleet. Yes. <laughs> who kidnapped you? Um. Mm. Is there a location on Absalom that? Which we all would have hung out that isn't that is easily accessible um, hmm, that last part really ruled out Aspis so uh, yes I mean the coffee place the uh, like what was it space bucks and then we have the the info spire um, yes there's that um, I mean there's the crime scene that we uh <laughs> Yeah, um, there's that. Hopefully, it won't mean anything to anyone. Um, old man guns. That's a unresolved plot point. And then but that's actually not a terrible idea. Guns is not a bad idea. Guns is um. Ah. Yeah. Guns is probably actually a good shout because it's kind of down one of the shady areas too. Yeah. So. Um. Had you all been on the shopping trip, you need a bag with that. Would have been the best code phrase. <laughs> <laughs> or you, was it, you want gift wrap? Was that it? I think that was it. Oh, it was. Yeah. But I think it's. Uh... I just come through. Um... I'm trying to think whether Nick would use Lyco's name, or if there's another name that you would have gone by. I'm assuming that Lyco probably has an alias, various aliases. Yeah, he definitely would have. I just haven't actually thought <laughs> of it. They'd probably be fairly generic, you know. They, because I'm 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 playing them somewhat more serious. I'm not going down the road of, road of making them obviously aliases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't have anything off the top of my head, but. Yes. Rule for generic person names. <laughs> yeah, let's. I'll get like. Let's see. So, random sci-fi name 
generator. Right, let's see what I get for you. Sci-fi name generator. The site can't be reached. Probably. Uh, did you just write down, John? Yeah, did you as well? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Next, uh, next one in line. Teachers. Oh my god, this has to be it. What is it? It is in the <laughs> <laughs> campus. Yes. That's li literally, that's no. half a campus from Bengal, right? But like can it just be. Because there is a name there. Ben Galensis. Ben Galensis. Ben Galensis. <laughs> like, that, that's a great one. <laughs> because literally, like, if you had a species of something that was from Bengal, it would probably be called, like. <laughs> but there's the um, that was the list that I got, and they're all wonderful. But I think that's the best one. Ben Ooh. Galensis. Yep. So it's uh. This is just mangled Latin. <laughs> Try also ben. Is some Greek. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's literally just classical words. Right, Lyco, do you have any forgery type powers of any oh, kind? Oh, sure, sure. Because I want to know how Let's good this look. alias is. Space cop resources level good. Um, <laughs> right, what would, what, would, what would forgery be, sleight of hand? Uh, I don't know. Um, you talk to me through... Deception. Maybe even well, your... I, I, actually, your profession. That makes sense. Profession bounty hunting. Like, that makes sense, right? Okay. So Two profession rules in one game. I know, right? This is the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> professionals. Better measures are not one. I mean, solely. So solely one. How dare you? <laughs> the TV show was amazing. Um. Right, okay. Good, good. 19? There it is. Number? It is 19. Roll good. Good, good. It just means if anybody tries to like suspect it, I know what they need we to need beat. To hit that. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's all right. It's pretty decent. Keep in mind, most mooks that you're dealing with probably won't be. You have the resources to even look into that. So, yeah, Ben Galensis. <laughs> yep. Ben Galensis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we're gonna go that stupid, we should have gone for Velociraptor Mongoliensis. Mongolian Velops. Yeah, that's what it's called. The Velociraptor Mongoliensis. Well, it's one of them. It's called. No, I would call you Velo. Velociraptor. <laughs> no. Sir. Velo Raptor. Galensis is a weird enough surname, and Ben is a simple enough yeah. basic first name that it sounds like a it does. possible sci fi name. But anyway, moving on from this complete segue. Yep. So, the message I've got, <laughs> I've just typed up, is calling Galensis to the old shooter for Ooze Protocol. Yeah. Do you want to type that some? Yep, yep, perfect, thank yep. you. Hopefully, he understands that means we will pick him up there. <laughs> securely. Or we'll find out. Right. <laughs> what I can't wait for is the the shot of the Yuxians on the ship looking at the comms panel, being like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> it should be, yeah. Unbreakable code. <laughs> hmm. Right. Okay. Is there any kind of hidden message in there beyond? The fact that you want them to go to Old Man Guns? Um, most. I mean, that's where we're going to pick them up. Um, probably try to fit in um, a timing, maybe. Kind of this. I actually know what time it's supposed to be in game, so. I mean, it's yeah. like ship time versus station time, right? So, I mean, you'd be as well just mm -hmm. putting high noon or some shit in there. Yep, let's throw that in. Right. It's high. Just edit the. Noon. Yep. I mean, Hard why the hell not, right? <laughs> it's high there we go. Noon. <laughs> Seems right, yeah. 
Right. You should be able to understand that. That's our bid for rescue attempt. Okay. Yep. So you you feel reasonable that it's been at least submitted. <laughs> um, yes. Barring any weird shit that should get to Lycos com. So um, what's everybody else doing in the ship? Mm. What's just been observing to that moment? Because um, what's yeah. the chances he's going to come back, right? Uh, absolutely none, so I guess we should just start making our way to Absalom. I forgot it. I'll try and get to Absalom. Mm. Somehow. Mm. So, how do we get to Absalom? <laughs> Alice points out the window. It's just through there. <laughs> I would nod sarcastically. She does. She's looking at the window so she can't see it. Nobody ever appreciates Zora's nods. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a lot of feeling in those nods. It's a thankless job. A lot goes on in those nods. <laughs> very descriptive nods. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't go to our usual docking, I assume. I <laughs> assume, most likely. <laughs> So could just look out the window. I think Alice turns round in the the chair to obviously join the conversation. Like, is that because the usual doc is paid for by Aspis, and we're not sure if we still work for them? We definitely don't still work for them. Pretty sure we don't. Okay, <laughs> she peels off an Aspis sticker. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> It's usually like general docks, like yeah, like can th- th- you could just like go out to one of the arms and uh, work our way through from there. Mm. I assume we can. Where exactly is the fighting happening at the moment? <laughs> it's, I'm assuming it's so revolved mostly around the big bubble. Let me um. Let me take us to a map, shall I? All right. Let's let's be crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a map I have it's made already. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> right, so that's okay. Copy that. Let's move myself to a new space. <gasps> Two seconds. Because this needs to be created. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's what I was saying. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> dun 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 dun. That's definitely what I heard. Right, so if I just make quality audio entertainment. Thank you. It's the interlude. Everybody knows that. Welcome to the interlude. Da 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 Thanks, guys. That You're worked. welcome. Thank you. Oh, I'm really hungry. <laughs> All you've done is eat. It's one of those days, you know? Yeah. I had a weekend like that, to be honest. I had a lot over the weekend. It was pretty good. Unusual for me, though. It's a day. It is. Mm. Okay, so that looks fine. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So, if I move you guys to this page. This is. Oh, I need to draw out, I think. I'm just gonna edit. Oh, no, I don't. It's just a. U. B. E. Is that what I want? Is that right? It's gonna be less invasive. Right, so we've got space, oh. alright? Mm-hmm. And then. Let's, let's get a spaceship. Alright, so. Here is a spaceship. And 
user user there so just jumped in and then let's see what else have we got here let's see oh, fuck damn <laughs> this is so what it was oh it was the first thing that came up in the the library mm -hmm. and then let's see We've got I throw this all together. I forgot how much random Star Trek stuff to be on this now because of the Star Trek system. Mm -hmm. Starred Trek. Starring the stars. Both of them. Mm -hmm. So then we can have these things. Hi. And then. <laughs> position all this stuff. Just to give you an idea of the... The good old scale. Yeah. Do you like the dolphin? I like the dolphin. Oh, nice. Dolphin's nice. Dolphin. And yeah, it can all be like that. And then let me find something for Absalom. Where is Absalom? There, yeah, that can be Absalom. There you go. How's your situation? Oh. Um. Hmm. Lovely. Mm. And like, where are the docking parts? Like, any in this side? Do we kind of just sneak on in, you know? Just go whoop, 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 whoop. So, we are nothing but debris, don't mind us. Right, so if I move that back to the object layer, and move this token to the objects, yeah. So if we're here, right, and I freehand this, usually you would want to probably, like, okay, okay. Oh, right. Right, I was seeing the dolphin thing as Absol. No. Okay. No, I'm getting that. Um, the dolphin thing's the majestic new space thing. Okay. Okay. Ah, see, yeah, I was confused with that too. Nope. Literally, you've just flown in. This big kind of city thing uh, is actually between you and the. Uh, Think that can things. get us around that, Alice. I mean, she just kind of looks at you and she's like, "Well, not not if we're in reverse, Captain." Oh, <laughs> uh, just just get us around that fleet. Get us towards Absalom. I believe in you, girl. The finger guns. From this stay. distance, it wouldn't take long. We could jump back into drift. And appear on the other side of Absalom, if that's clear. I love that idea. It's, 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 it's 
yeah. out of character. I love that idea. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with attempting a micro jump, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the the engines have only taken so much so far, and currently have Lyco trapped in them. But that's fine. The only reason people don't do it is because it's not much more efficient on a short-term basis mm -hmm. than uh, just using thrusters and the whole, you know, bringing bits of the drift into reality. Doesn't but in this case... Wouldn't it still take a d6 of days to get out of it? Um, no, it's, let me have a look. I just thought all jumps towards Absalom <laughs> were a d6 of days. <laughs> Which would be hilarious, it's like we'll be back for you in six <laughs> days, like <laughs> Uh, so that part of the the book when it starts going into equations. If you were a hundred squares, then you would be a ten for the light fear. The <laughs> wind. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I'm happy to put it to a rule. Yeah, it's one of those ones where. Rules is written, it does say 1d6 days, but I feel like it's when you read the fluff. Yeah, because uh, uh, it's the one thing. <laughs> the one thing. One match. of the many things of mm. the system I think is bizarre is the drift travel. Yeah. Very bizarre. It's interesting. It's unique. But bizarre. Mm. Um, so. It's, it's almost like the fluff doesn't match up with the um, mechanics in that. Yeah, it's very, very bizarre. I think um, you'd need to like rig the engine to want to be okay with this. Um, yes. Because you're trying I to bypass the 1d6 physics that was built into this universe. Yep. Um, and then that... <laughs> I think the risk here is it's like you guys being lost for a day in mm -hmm. drift versus... Because you could get the ship there. No worries at all. Versus however many hours it would be to get to the station, like maybe mm. Mm -hmm. if you had to like kite the battlefield carefully, and then maybe attempted to hide things like emissions and also where that comm signal came from. Yeah, it was something we could just drift straight into. Mm -hmm. Try to drift straight into a docking port. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at the demo maneuver. This, <laughs> which I feel is probably against the uh, regulations that Absalom usually has in place. I mean. It's a pretty extreme situation, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, I put that suggestion to the captain. <laughs> God, the expanse is so good. <laughs> right, so do you want to just say it to the captain in. Yes. Uh, captain. Words. Uh, we could attempt a micro jump and drift straight into the station. And that should avoid the battlefield. There's obviously some risk, given it's not designed to do that. Anytime you say drift, just please finish it with jump for me instead of this yep. the gentle drifting like it sounds like. <laughs> a more wild <laughs> risk than flying through that. Point out the fleet. I was like, my plan was to fly around that. All around that. Uh, we I don't like our chances with the fleet. This plan has more variability in terms of the time frame, but not in the... Uh, we wouldn't have to contend with... We shouldn't have to contend with cannons. I don't believe I'm saying this, but try the jump. <laughs> Just... mm. <laughs> Why not? I love I love the cheesiness of it. I, I just I just can't even let Nine this Nine weeks later. <laughs> I think there's a part of Nix Five that is almost delighted that this has been agreed to. <laughs> um, just because I imagine he's read a paper on Conspiracy Greg's blog. I, I want I want to maneuver on double repertoire, right? That means we're not do it, right? <laughs> this is like a test run. <laughs> Let's do it, man. I run simulations. I think Zig would really like to help in some way. Because <laughs> he's like, I feel like 
we get our best chances are if we all work together. Of course. I could jump on like the second like co-piloting chair and just start doing stuff. <laughs> he feels like he's seen enough from um, Emily and Alice to kind of figure out his way around. <laughs> enough from Alice that one time you sat in her lap distracting her. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And those many times he sat staring um, when Emmeline was at the desk. Mm -hmm. Did he have a mind link with Emmeline? That's one uh, way, though. That's one way. It's not Listen. like instant absorb character uh, knowledge. That'd be, no. that'd be so it's broken. instant dump character on you. <laughs> I wasn't yeah, sure if Emmeline's psychic things would leave an imprint. Emmeline has a lot of psychic things going on. Hmm. Like, I don't think the imprints that uh, she has Zig wants. Uh, <laughs> yes. I think this gets the picture across, doesn't it, right? Like this. It does. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Oof. That's a lot of lasers. Should <laughs> sure we jump? Thanks, it burns him. I've got, like, Cub lasers. <laughs> <laughs> it's the angle. <laughs> yeah. Right, so the plan is mm -hmm. to rig the engine. Yep. That has been the plan the last three sessions, I feel. Um, yes. So, rig the engine to get inside Absalom. Yeah, I imagine actually. Next five. Is that the part you've maybe missed out from vocalising? Mm, to the caption. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Nick's five's head, he knows of a bay, probably a repair bay, that is almost always empty. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that, that seems plausible. Yeah, and uh, he knows the coordinates, probably, approximately. Um, no. um, sure. I mean, space things move, but yeah. Like, it's just a bit of maths. Yeah. <laughs> totally fine, right? <laughs> I mean, we'll get in at least. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, okay. It'll be interesting, mm -hmm. right? Yep. <laughs> What, what rollers do we need on that? I've got a lot of harm. Eh, fucking hell, what even? <laughs> right, so... Go rig the engine first. Okay. <laughs> do you want help with that? <laughs> um... Does anyone else know spaceship mechanics? Uh, I mean... Once we're in the trip, I'm actually trip, just gonna open up Alice's character sheet and see if it's worth her helping. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's probably worth her helping. Yeah, I mean, yeah, getting this preliminary check done. I mean, I imagine the captain can man the helm for the time being. Well, this is to rig the engine so it doesn't just say no first. Yeah, the piloting yeah. part's a secondary problem. Yeah, so we'll get the uh, rigging done with Alice's help. Right now. I'm just going to put this out there. If this fails, mm -hmm. these are lost for a day in drift. Right? Okay. So, I only really need Colin for the next session. Hmm. <laughs> 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 but, it'll be interesting. Oh no, you'll have a day in drift. Uh, it'll be uh, fantastic. It'll just be mostly how many guns can we tape to the sides of the ship. <laughs> 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 right, okay. Um, okay. Right, she's going to roll. Engineering. Right, I'm going to need to get more than a 10, didn't I? So, yep. Yep, she got higher than a 10. Cool. Yep, so you get your plus two. So I roll mine. <laughs> yep. Get a 30. Oh, thank God. Plus two. <laughs> a 32, you see. Yep. Okay. Right. Now let's see how she does on her piloting. Can I help on the piloting? Was, I want to help on the piloting. Was, yeah, sorry, was does Zig help on the piloting? Yeah. Does Zig have piloting? I've I had a pilot, pilot. 
like as as a train skill. It's a train yeah. skill, as well. Yes. Yep. Uh, whoever wants to help with that, then I think. What is? There's... What is your plus? So yeah, uh, you just work out who's helping. Uh, oh yeah, um, I've got eleven. Oh, yeah, you, you do. Yeah, that up. You became a great pilot sometime. <laughs> One day. Badoop. Oh. <laughs> Can take that as the pilot in check. Right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's see how she does. Helping! Clack, 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 clack. Plus two, yeah. Mm-hmm. Total she got a 22. <sighs> well then. I'm not a bad pilot myself, you tell <laughs> I think the very fact that Zig is so good is maybe putting her off. <laughs> Where she's going to do things and Zig flicks all the switches just before she gets there. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of throwing her off her routine. Um, right. Zig Zig's also kind of like, he flicks like one of the switches like with his feet. <laughs> Cre creepy. Yeah. Let's see, so. And then. <laughs> right. Just so we're all fully aware yep. of what we're doing. <laughs> Joy. So you spill up the drive. It looks a bit rickety, but it's it's holding together. You know, it's holding together. Uh, both you and Alice is uh, worried and, you know, confident exchanges, you know, yep. in the engine room. Uh, and then she goes up, heads off to the uh, cockpit. Zig's already booting everything up and she just puts him into the other seat. And then he uh, sits down. And she's like, I see you're helping. And then... Uh, then obviously gets a bit confused with the role. And are you two joining in the cockpit for the jump, or next five is fully armored up. <laughs> yep. And is <laughs> strapping himself in tightly to one of the uh, seats. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, Zora? Zora would also probably be in the cockpit. I don't know if he'd strap himself up. I think he's probably got to like, get splashed against the ball if this feels regardless, so it's fine. <laughs> I read a theory about this once before. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Please tell. They said it's theoretically possible. <laughs> you just have to get all the, the numbers in place. <laughs> Could be the future of travel. <sighs> once they find those probes. <laughs> oh, I've pressed the button. <laughs> <laughs> press the button. <laughs> and then, yeah, I think with that, like maybe like you and Lu like uh, sorry, Nick are staring each other across like the behind the seats where the co-pilot and the pilot sit, and it's Alice and uh, what do you call him uh, Zig, and uh, she goes okie dokie, <laughs> and then pushes the button, and then obviously just like how the drift drive works every single time uh, lightning crackles around the ship obviously and then does a barrel roll and whoop, vanishes leaving crackling energy in the space where they once were Lyco so meanwhile mere hours previously welcome into hell and Sindel greets you, and as he waves his hand open, he reveals, 
burning people, shot people, screaming people, violence, damage. General disarray. Okay. Um. And Sindel slowly I, uh, starts walking away. I. It's probably quite quick, oh. actually, because it's quite big. It's quite a big gate on it. <laughs> I follow at an appropriate, mm -hmm. but not excessively hurried pace. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I suppose what I'll do is try and ask him what. So, uh, what? Yeah, no, just what? <laughs> that, that is what I ask him. And then Sindel stops and goes, what? <laughs> What's happening? I have brought you to my side. Yeah, I see that, but the station. And he kind of just looks around, or it looks around the room, as if noticing the wreckage for the first time. And then it stops and then kind of hangs there as if in deep thought for just like a second. And goes, Absalom has been attacked. Yeah. Uh, attacked by... It just stares at you as if waiting for you to finish the sentence. Attacked by who? Old. And puts like a finger up to your face. But like, as if like, number one. I'm not sure I follow. An old? Like, Sindel's hands come up and makes like a hologram of you as you are now. Like a projection, if you will. And it's just you as you are now, like a small mirror, you know. You. It kind of vaguely waves at the mirror. Kind of waits for you to respond. I sort of nod in acknowledgement. And it kind of like waves its hand, and it's like oh, before he died. You. Yeah. That's. And then it dismisses it as soon as you go. Yeah, it goes, and it just points to itself. Me. It's the Elibrians. Or Elibrian. It puts its finger back up, like as if showing the number one again. It kinda looks it looks very pleased with you. <laughs> Big smile. It's... Is that its ship? Cindy thinks. Our ship. I know it, but is it in control of it at the moment? Yes. Does Does it have Allies? Forces? Dead. Old. Gone. So it's doing this itself. Yes. Christ. And it points to itself, it's like... Now. And vaguely to the like <laughs> holes in to like the space station, up through what would have been like viewing ports and stuff that are shielded over now. Th then, wags vaguely to the sky. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, that's super helpful. Um. <laughs> and like, if you do take a second or two to like stop and think about that, Cindy will just walks on and goes, "Come along." I'll follow. Um. Yep. I suppose I have to ask, like, what, what is it you need me to do here? Uh, yeah. I don't know that it'll be any use against that thing. <laughs> no, you are small. I am small. And it kind of just creepily leans over you. And then carries on walking again. But you have something in mind. You brought me here. It stops, turns around, and it's got the biggest smile again. Yes. You. Here. Not. And waves vaguely at the. kind of like holes through several decks above it. Not there. And it brings up like a, an image of the 11th hour. Good for them. See. You like me. And it kinda just like makes like a circle out of like kinda green light and it dismisses it like it didn't know yeah. why it did that. And then it says You are a target because of death. It says kind of the undead has some sort of issue with so oh, it so seems. <laughs> he lo he like waves vaguely around. Now, see for the first time, you've noticed it's only the undead that are dead. Ah. Uh -huh. So you've now just come to focus that these people had died before they were like mutilated. Yeah, they were already in a condition where you go like, yeah, that wasn't a. a yeah, so it's that thing where we now get that slightly closer shot of them. Um. So coming after the undead. No. We are in its way. The way to what? And then it kind of like puts his finger up again as if, see? No. Like, now you're getting it. You're asking the right questions. Um. Yeah, it kind of just smirks and smiles at that and then kind of just says come along and then he walks off I do follow yep and obviously you walk for a bit again and he starts just randomly muttering but not about anything that makes sense to you like it also seems to be in several languages at the same time as if it's just actually babbling yeah okay um you know, like as if somebody was trying to think uh, to themselves almost. Can I like roll culture to see if I'm getting anything? Sure, yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, okay, let me just get my sheet open because it seems to have closed it. <laughs> my sheet. My sheet. <laughs> <laughs> to understand fragments uh, of eternity! <laughs> of muttered. <laughs> 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 that uh, that sentence go away from me, and I just sort of hit the button. That's anyway. fine. Yep. <laughs> the F gift. <laughs> That's a decent roll. Yeah, it's muttering something about hearts and um, like life force and cold and evacuate, or what you're picking up. Okay. It's as if he's trying to work out what order to put his thoughts in and what language that or he's having eight conversations with eight different people right now it's hard to tell which <laughs> kind of kind of babbling madman possibly a guy having eight simultaneous conversations mm. uh, both maybe yeah so yeah that's happened okay uh, yeah, like you can interrupt him, or you can 
wander no, on. I, I, I'm happy to sort of listen and wander on. Yeah, and then like you wander on for a bit, and he clearly seems to be going somewhere. Like he hasn't stopped and looked confused or like hesitant. Like you are clearly being led somewhere. Um, and like even from, I'll just kind of run off that culture check. I really don't mind. Uh, like you've been around the station a lot. Um, yeah. Like seems like you're heading towards the center of the station. Okay. And it seems like towards the light. Yeah, like kind of towards see, like the big open plaza and everything. Um, like the huge kind of essentially mini city in the middle. Like you're kind of heading towards that way. I just threw all the kind of weird kind of a uh, corporate side of it. Um, as in the, not the corporate, the kind of ambassadorial side of things yeah. where Sindile had kind of been based. Um, obviously there's been a year of the Eoxians kind of being settling into Absalom um, as refugees. Uh, the the Bone Sages made sure the Eoxians performed duties that would alleviate uh, tension maybe and stress. So Undead slaves. Basically undead slavery. Um, like their their bargain to ease tension was that all of the manual labor workers would get vacation until the Euxians left. I better be paid, obviously. So they're being paid for the slaves' work. Hence, why all the tensions didn't go crazy. And it was a very clever move on the Bone Sages part to be like, well, we'll just do all. It's a very costly one. It's like we'll do all the jobs, and then all the jobs you can still be paid for, even though you don't have to do them. So there's been obviously quite a economic upturn because obviously people have more well they're spending money more right because you're off work yeah so Sunday that would work like a 40 hour shift um, over whatever length of time with how many breaks are in it and then would be off work for a bit now or is just off work and now fill that time by spending their money so overall the bone stages have been seen as a kind of Double-edged Economic sword. Boost. Yeah, like it's been a it's been a boon, but one of those. At first, everybody was super racist about it, and now suddenly they realise, oh, that's not so bad once you get to know them. You know, they've done all the, all the boring work, right? Yeah. So yeah, and uh, most of the bone sages went elsewhere after this to try and uh, resolve their current plight. Sindiel stayed on as ambassador. Uh, Another one stayed on. I don't know what their name is though. I have no idea what I called them. It's written somewhere. Uh, but they also stayed on as well. Um, why you need two ambassadors, we don't know. But yeah, what the other bone sages are away to do, we also don't know. But that's pretty much the year's catch up for you right there. Uh, okay. Roughly. Obviously, there's minutia to that. But yeah, we can uh, go into specific. That's the gist of it. And realistically, it was very clever because most people went, oh, that's actually pretty good. Obviously, more people spending money meant all the corporations were happy. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, because obviously, all of their workers not having to work, they wouldn't have been okay with, but now all their workers just get to spend money. So really, the corporations just pay themselves now, which is kind of great. So yeah, pretty good all around. Um, yeah, like, eventually, Cinderella stops muttering to themselves um, and then it just becomes like a quiet walk and it isn't like Cinderella's in a rush to go anywhere either as it slowly just kind of swings hanging from the kind of chicken legs that are walking it okay yeah um, I mean I'm still following along you know no definitely I'm uh, uh, attentive just, just showing this to every day for those of you who forgot what the wonderful Cinderella looked like and Thank you to that artist whose name is just there. <laughs> Praise be to the chicken. Yeah, it's just, just so wonderful looking. But yeah, so yeah, it walks along, and then it kind of just slowly puts its hand on your shoulder as you're keeping up with it, and it just kind of rests it there. How uh, uncomfortable? Yeah, as it keeps walking. That's it. Just for another like again unless you say anything or move away or slow down or speed up or something 
It's just gonna kinda rest it there as these are walking along for maybe half an hour or whatever. Would like to react um, in any way. He, I, I think, I think he would, you know, maybe cringe slightly. But I think at this point, I very much well, like, or rather, very much learn to uh, tolerate the little eccentricities of um, the Bone Sages. Mm. Um, yeah, I would say after a year of this shit, right? Because it's definitely been a year. Anything, right? Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, if you're paying attention as well, what people can get up to the um, sorry, that's okay. Like, it's you also notice that obviously some of those initial cushions, the the feathers from the cushions, are definitely still in his plumage, as well. <laughs> like those, th those are now permanent. You know, he kept those. That's his thing. Um, it's maybe why he volunteered to stay as the ambassador. You know, of the, the bone sages. Um, it's obviously the most people personally one of them all. And uh that or he's the run of the litter, who knows? But yeah, he's walking along and then all of a sudden like the hand just kinda like falls away and he stops. So like I think you notice because the hand falls down that he's no longer walking as well. We take a couple of steps in front of him. Yeah, I will stop also. Uh you can see him almost like he's kinda playing is it a sitar? Where you would play with it over your knee, was that it, or is that the totally wrong instrument, Callum? You're probably better to ask this question. Uh, a sitar is kind of like the big sort of Indian one with all the strings that you kind of sit cross-legged in. Exactly. Yeah. So um, and sits kind of in the basket of your your legs crossed. Right, and you kind of play it horizontally. Yeah. 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 Right. Kind of all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of like kind of like um. More Weirdly like enough, I knew degrees. I knew that there was a stringed instrument called a sitar, and I could picture the instrument you're describing now. But hadn't put those two together. Mm. Um, well, so there you go. It looks like when you turn around, Sindel looks like he's playing with like a stringed instrument with his hands um, horizontally, like the way I described there. Um, okay. With like kind of magic lines and kind of symbols being moved around, um, with his head kind of canted to the side or its head canted to the side, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of doing that. I mean, I I sort of stand alert and watch. I figure, let him do his ritual. Yeah, and like the only thing that you've really had to you within maybe this overall like half an hour walk or whatever it's been, um, as he's babbled a bit, uh, maybe forty five minute walk. Like the place is trashed, but it seems to have been like surgical. I'm um, trying to think. Let's see. There's a rule here. Um, I'm trying to think what it would be. Might even just be inte like intelligence, to be honest. Um, okay. Do you want me to make a wee intelligence? Unless you've got like a kind of mathematics or military rule you can give me. <laughs> right. Um, physical science. Physical science. Uh, yeah, it would be a physical uh, science. That's the okay. perfect one. Uh, what am I rolling for? Shall I write something? Uh, just, just write. Station, if you really want to. <laughs> Station. <laughs> yep. That, that, that was you leaning over a pail of books and just hitting what I yep, thought maybe in the right Good enough. <laughs> it's much more fun to do it this way. So, it's just when we try and work out what was that we were doing? <laughs> yeah, no. uh, wait, wait, wait. But for the. Well, we've established the precedent of Callum writes gibberish and now I write gibberish. The, um. The it's spreading. Satoshian um, role for it's physical science. Ah, uh, Satoshian. Good old Satoshian. Big good uh, bone stage name. Uh, good son, <laughs> Hood. Um, yeah. You look around and yeah, you can't really work out like what happened or who or what killed the people around you. Because this place I mean, is littered with corpses. Immediately, my guess is that it was him, but there's there like, so there's no, there's like no indication, and like, okay, trying to think, me, have you seen Bone Sages in action? And by that I mean like I attacking. I think to some limited degree I would have, but I don't think I've seen them in you know battle mode. Yeah, yeah, like I don't think you would know enough to rule out Sindel completely. Do you know what I mean especially yeah. with that role as well? 
Like, maybe your initial thought was that he'd trashed them. Um, but, it, yeah, you, could just, you don't hear it enough. It's just a bit of a carnage, I guess, is the best way to kind of put it. Everything's pretty awful and it's... It looks like there's like been bodies piled on top of bodies, but it looks like it's almost as if they've been trying to create barricades with their bodies. That does sound like very much a strategy zombies may mm -hmm. employ. Yeah, um, especially when not fully in control of their own actions, right? Um, but yeah, and then he just kind of sits plucking away at these kind of weird kind of ethereal strings in midair, and then uh, he just stops. And he kind of looks a bit concerned for the first time maybe ever you've seen concern on his face. And he says, uh, Like who? Zendaya? Yes, that is me. You... You are a beacon. Kind of like, open palms you. To this entity? No. To your friends. Yeah. It kind of looks like he's like rolling that word around in his mouth like an aftertaste. As okay. if he's like, you know, like someone's at a sweet you really didn't like and doesn't know whether to spit it out if it's rude or not. And then he uh, kind of focuses back on you. I am using you to get off of Absalom. See, do you think they have a suitable way off for you? We have transport, but yes, with you remaining on board your ship, I have no doubt it waves vaguely at the you know destroyed decks above it. Yeah, it would have targeted your vessel because of you but without me the vessel might the vessel is insignificant without you yeah okay so what is our strategy yes and kind of looks at you like very deeply, its eyes slightly glow with, with focus. It says, and like it takes like a, like a <laughs> the equivalent of a deep breath, but without breathing in, if that makes sense. Okay. And like it kind of like stretches up, and then it just drops from the legs, and like the body detaches, right. and it kind of just like collapses down. To like, you know, almost like bended knees, um, as if like poised, kind of like a gymnast would be, and then like straightens itself up, and like every as as it straightens up, like you hear every bone in its body crack. Ooh, lovely. Yeah, and it's as it stands up, it is almost like someone like falling downstairs in bubble wrap, and uh, clack 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 clack, and it straightens up and like cracks its shoulders, rolls them back. And says, I won't ask you to carry me. And then smirks with a really big smile. Okay. And then it kind of waves its hand at the, the legs and they just like disintegrate and break apart um, and like fall and clack to the ground. And then it kind of walks forward relatively briskly. Sure, okay. Yeah. These are starting to head into like the. The plaza. Now it's maybe been like an hour, half an hour of walking. Uh, do you inquire any further on your half hour walk? Any questions yeah, come to mind? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to comment on that. I'm just going to bank that piece of information mm -hmm. away. Um, I mean, it makes sense, right? He didn't originally have those. Those aren't something his species had. Um, I'm just forever so do so. It makes sense. They're a sort of necrotic construct. Um, I uh, I'd ask him. So, something like, uh, so do you have a way to mask our presence, hide us? No. It kind of just, like, <laughs> rolls its eyes 
when you say that, but it rolls them towards you, like he's answered no in front of you, and then he rolls his eyes towards you as if that's not the point. And it says, uh, It, and waves to the sky, is, and he's looking for a word, a brother. He kind of looks at you for understanding. It's one of your kind, yeah. One of the first. It fell asleep. And we kept it asleep. Why? <laughs> it kind of waves to itself and then waves to everything around it. Progression. Okay. We are evolution. And it kind of like, like gestures between the two of you. We will survive what's to come. And what's to come? <laughs> it just has like a grin at one side of his face. You might live long enough to see that with my help. It's the, the grin meets the other side of the face. <laughs> yeah. Well. Living long enough is sort of what I'm aiming for, so we're on a good start. And a fine ambition it is. And like, you're picking up as well. Sindel seems a lot more competent, disconnected from the legs. <laughs> Oddly. Hmm. As if that was almost pantomime, almost, you know? And now this is the actor behind the role. And I. Uh, he kind of so strides forward with his bare feet and uh, he then stops and turns back around and he, as you're like maybe mulling over what he's just kind of said to you and he says my brother does not like progress distasteful we are here is the thing that confuses me a little. You knew that he would react this way when he woke up? If. And he kind of puts a finger up as if correcting you. If. If it woke up, but. Where did that information come from? Records? Surviving? I mean, I know there are pre gap records, but how long ago is this? Or. And like, do you remember it? Cindel, like, kind of just kind of stops you by putting like two hands, like blades, just out in front of you, just sli almost like slicing there and stopping, as if measuring a fish size now. And then he uh, puts his hands together and then pulls them apart again. And it's almost like um, like the way you would with like kind of dough, but it's all these strings of light that come out from each finger, and there's loads of little kind of zipping back, almost like kind of a. Uh, like electrons going back and forth and neurons sparking between the lines and stuff. Um, like really, really angry musical sheets. And uh, Okay. It kind of holds it out to you. As if to take it. Um, I guess I, I reach for it then and, and try. So like your two hands go out and it almost like as if it's wrapping string around your hands. Just kind of lays these lines over you of energy as they spark. And then Cinderella points to like a part. Cause we are currently here to you and points at you and then points back at a line where the, as soon as he touches it like it like glows brighter <laughs> okay however and it kind of like scoops all of it up and rolls it into like a ball and it holds it out I am here 
and ha like just takes your hand and like puts the ball in your hand. Oh, like glowing light. That used to be like all these strings. Okay, you're. You have a different relationship with the progression of time than likes of myself. You see time as progression. That is how we differ. So you have an awareness of... Of course, when we went back to the station, you'd already been there. Because for you it wasn't one time or the other. We went to the station together. In the moment, we went to the station. It kind of looks at you for understanding. <laughs> yeah. Don't think any harder than that. And then he kind of like puts your other hand over like the hand that's ho cupping this, this ball. And then just lets you like... You're just kind of stood there as he walks away with like your hands as if like trying to keep a spider in. Only it's this <laughs> okay. like this ball of light I really time. I never <laughs> try and keep a spider in my hands. <laughs> Ugh. Um, like my <laughs> No offense, it's fine, but yeah. Uh, um, Don't just spy those out. Screw that. There's. Okay, alright, so. What do you do with the ball? I, do. Um, <laughs> I sort of release it into the air? Yeah, and it. Um, Falls? It just. Like, as soon as you let it go, it just kind of floats there. Huh. Gl uh, I, glittering I away. <laughs> Zig would fucking you know, love like, this. I, I walk like around it, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, if, like uh, you know how you might walk around like a yeah. high ceiling decoration oh, definitely. and like, look yeah. at it and a uh, huh, sort of way, uh, and then just continue on. Uh, but if you are aware, uh, and you just hear, you hear from the like as you're like saying that, like you hear from this, you are overthinking it. Yeah, probably. But, well, like you said, for me, time is linear. So it's confusing to think of it not being that way for others. And like he stops, turns around, and like kind of almost marches back and looks at you as you're maybe like walking around the, the orb. And then he kind of just like waves a hand at the orb and it goes away. And he goes, this might be easier. And then makes like a glass, like a, just like a you know generic tumbler up here. Okay. And then a straw up here. And then okay. hands you the straw. I take it. Okay. And then it cuts you on your cheek with its nail and gets like a drop okay. of your blood and puts... Okay. Puts the uh, the drop of the blood on the end of the straw, so it just goes all the way down the straw, and then like drips out the bottom, and just looks at you. Okay. Do you understand you? And v vaguely gestures to the straw. Yeah. Okay. And then it looks around and sees like a body, and then just waves its hand and pulls some kind of liquid. It's very not red. Out of this uh, nearby body. Pulls it up and then just dumps it into the tumbler and hands you the tumbler full of this kind of kind of blackish brownish liquid. Uh okay waves. Me and my brother. Okay. No, I think I do see. The straw, it's a process. Yes. And then kind of like, just picks them out of your hands and just drops them. Okay. And then starts walking. Come along. <laughs> I fall. Yeah. And he's still got like a fair bit of the mane still around him as well with all these feathers. So as he walks, like they do that kind of nice floaty kind of up and down, almost fanning behind him. Um, as he walks, so he looks relatively majestic, you know, if not just ridiculous, um, as is tradition. 
and says, That's this boy. Yeah. So he heads off anyway, and uh, if you've got anything you specifically want to ask him uh, along the journey, we can, I or we can skip to the I end of the journey. Skip. Yep, cool. Get to the point where he's in an elevator, obviously. So we have the wonderful elevator music, and you hear screaming and explosions, like kind of punctuating it, um, and like people falling down shafts next to you and stuff like that. I am. Um, and Sindel just kind of like tapping a foot to the tune in the elevator music and uh, then the doors open and you're at like the plaza itself and you're walking forward uh, and obviously the plaza's in turmoil as well um, bit of a like you know absolute riot has kicked off between the living and the dead and you know, maybe some of the undead aren't exactly not using the living as shields as well, since they're the only okay. targets, you know? Like, this is a bit more intense here. Um, obviously, you can imagine that certain parts of the station would have been devoid of actual living staff for quite a while. Yeah, because um, like it'd be the world yeah. rungs where everything's done. Yeah, and it would be like, there'd be sections designated dead zones now, where the living just wouldn't want to go as well. Yeah, it's um, creepy for them. Yeah, really, really creepy. Um, especially with the bone sages kicking around. And also people maybe go missing occasionally and the bone sages know nothing about it. You know? It's like, are zombies never lose control and eat people? What are you talking about? Oh, you never mentioned that? Nobody's missing? Good. Don't check the roster. You know? Creepy things like that. And um, obviously, like, Sindael has given you full reign to look over all of these things if uh, the stewards ever were upset by anything, you know, and nothing ever was found during that year. But yeah, uh, so you get to like the, the huge big kind of open plaza with all the kind of like the, the huge park and everything in the middle of it. The one where you were on the kind of pseudo date with Chakos. Yeah. And where a lot of the corporate buildings are in this park. Because it's, it's a bit like a city in here. And then Sindel stops you, like, as you go off the elevator. And it kind of puts its hand out, as if to stop you. And then turns, and it says... My brother is coming for the Star Stone. The heart of... And it kind of, like, wow. waves its, like, head as if... Eh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Absalom will be... Unsustainable. Yeah. That's pretty, uh... That's not good for the craft... Craft world, fuck, I've got <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's not good for the, the, the pack worlds. It kind of looks a bit confused, like it's never considered that. It is not good for us. No. I intend to leave. And you should come with me. Yes? Agreed. But to where? Can I wave vaguely? Away. And it kind of looks around, and like it just like picks up like some of the dirt, like it just scoops into the grass, breaks the beautiful lawn, lifts up the dirt, yeah. and then just holds it out, and then just like crumples it so it all falls down. This place will die. You want to live. Yes. Agreed. Good. We will live. And it really strains that word. Progress. Yeah. Smile slightly ironically. Yeah. You have questions about progress. It kind of waves vaguely to like your chest and like legs. <laughs> yeah. I have answers. It kind of just yeah. looks at you like as if it's taking you in. Uh, it's 
I, I, you know, and I just repeat the yeah, but it's it's more obviously somber in tone. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a that one is like a genuine acknowledgement. It's not a folksy, yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of like turns back and he says, as if like taking in the wreckage of the the place. You will want to save this, no doubt. Yes. Yeah. The, if possible. You have to make a choice. And it's looking at you like it's never looked at you before. And it's almost respect. <laughs> choice between fleeing the station potentially securing my own well, at least temporary survival or uh, well potentially severely shortening that uh, period of survival no, I want you to survive. You will not stay here. That is not the choice. Okay. When my brother takes the Star Stone, that is not an if. I can power the station until a suitable replacement can be synthesized. This will okay. take time. But the living will progress. And he looks very sad about that part. As if. Ugh. Or we leave together. And. And he picks up the dirt and crumples it again. Choose. Oh, <laughs> so what's going through Michael's it. head? Damn it, that's... Um... <laughs> It's, it's, he's very conflicted because he knows he can't possibly stand against that thing if it does choose to <laughs> do away with him. Um, mm. And he's dubious of going with Cindy. Oh, he's dubious of what kind of new future he can actually have. Well, me. I'll tell you what, right? I'm gonna re- I'm gonna re- repose the ending scene, right, for you. I'm gonna repose it a bit, and I'm gonna give you. Until the next session to think about your answer, then I think that's a better one. So we're gonna have him scoop up the dirt as per the plan. I'm just cutting out the middle bit where we think about stuff at half ten. So scoops up the dirt, crumples it in front of you, looking dead serious in your eyes again, that mild look of respect. And he says, "Choose," and then he waves his hand over at the big open plaza, where massive, tearing energy tendrils appear. And the eleventh hour crash lands in the middle of the park. Huh. Okay. Oh. And we leave it at choose. And we'll end the session there. I think that's a good okay, ending. That, that, that changes the mechanics of it considerably, yeah. Yeah. So, first of all, let's review goals, everybody. Sure. What's your thoughts besides how awful this spreadsheet now looks? <laughs> <laughs> I think I successfully gathered some information. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Um, do you want to dump that down into the completed lifestyle? lifestyle. Just, just, oh, just, so just copy it and paste it because at least it will stay blue that way. Um, perfect. Um, you can remove it from your activity. Good, good. Because once that's once everybody's empty, we can level up. Since everybody's empty. You know what I mean. Aren't we all in? Yep, yep, yep. So, MDLs, Zig. 
Um, I have taken. Oh. Still working on it, yeah. Still working on it for sure. Yep, no worries. Uh, Zora. Well, I'm taking steps. At least trying, <laughs> attempting. <laughs> well, <laughs> one big jump. <laughs> one jump. <laughs> Ahead of the starship. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, That's not joke. And then uh, next five. I managed to be snide about it at least. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we'll put that work in progress. Okay, so I had other interests this session. Yeah, and that's why I didn't want to just say let's pick one to focus on. I think it's best if we do it this way because once everybody's like completed the goal, we can then. Um, Although, Lyco seems to have reappeared. But I yeah. think you just copied yeah. it and didn't delete it. That's fine. We'll leave it as is anyway. Um, oh yeah, I hadn't deleted it yet. That's, that's yeah, true. Yeah, that's fine. We'll leave it as is. It's yeah, fine. It's, well, I've just went and fucking deleted uh, it. Well, do you know what? <laughs> Goals! High influx! Yeah. Um, right, let's do naming the session. Choose. Mm. I like it. That's yeah. not terrible. Not terrible. The choice is also an option. Mm -hmm. Could be. I remember. I feel like Zorus had a line earlier then. Wasn't it fuck like let's go to Akaton? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my plan. But, um. <laughs> what else have we got? Um, I think um, either choose or the choice are pretty strong contenders, uh, regardless. Uh, it may have actually just been Nico saying, I can't believe I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just a Nico thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, I don't really know what else other than... Um, besides the dodgy drift jump, right? <clears throat> You've arrived at your destination. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, we go with uh, choose... That seemed to be yeah. a, str a, a strong one. Yeah, I like it. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, Agreed! Because I think MD watching might think it's what we're we doing about that Lyco situation right at the start. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's, it doesn't give away, but then when you know the ending, you go... And it's a good, you see what I wanted to do, just like, trim that ending a bit as well? It was a better scene to have it just with... Mm -hmm. Choose. But it does change the, the dynamics of it considerably. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I wanted you to have that because I was thinking that it's going to happen next, regardless of what you said, really, anyway. So I'm like, I'd rather you had a bit of time to think about Sindale. Right? But anyway, we'll do a we'll do a, a round up of this. Let's go from the bottom up this time, since I always start at the top. Uh, Ziggy. Ah, oh, man. All of all of Lyco's stuff was awesome. I just I love, I love that whole, whole little bit. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I loved helping. With, <laughs> with flying, it was it was fun. Well, she rolled a twenty, and you rolled a twenty-eight. I mean, you kicked her ass. I know. Piloting. I am. I am, <laughs> I am. I am pilot god. You are the pilot now. Um, I'm the pilot now. This is when um, uh, when you just cut to the cockpit, and it's a, uh, uh, what's her name, Alice, in there, and she's like, <laughs> Zig did it. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> um, I also I also really liked that little image of um, like doing some like mystically scouting out, sitting there and trying to be you know extremely helpful, and then getting distracted by Alice, mm -hmm. and then sitting on Alice, and uh, the captain just not moving and just sitting there and well standing there. Yeah, I mean, like you've you've done uh, weird for like five whole minutes. Yep. <laughs> Zig kind of doing a bit of work and then meandering and um. Mm. Yeah, I move that Zora just slowly retreats into his own mind and screams for a bit. <laughs> 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 what am I doing? <laughs> and then eventually, like, comes back to the world goes less black around him, and then he comes to and he's like, "Oh wait, Zig was doing something. What was Zig up to?" Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. anything else to the to all this, Zig? No, um, I mean, Nick's five, but that goes without saying. I love better than Nick's five does. Excellent. On that note, uh, Colin. Uh, Colin. And what a Colin. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was, it was an interesting one because the uh, the bit it really was like 
the group and then Lyco. <laughs> um, yeah, with a wee flashback. I liked the, uh, the, the attempt to gain information about Lyco going boop mm -hmm. by Zig because it led to the moment where he's like, oh, she's magic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's yeah. interesting because it's interesting to see what he's going to do with that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, what exactly it means, like, it's no surprise that, you know, someone who is clearly a pretty close to, if not entirely sentient being, right? She's not meaningfully distinguishable from organic or inorganic life, mm -hmm. just because she is actually a machine rather than cybernetic, you know, you don't necessarily know that there is any meaningful distinction here in terms of intelligence. Mm -hmm. So you do wonder, like, is she literally just a machine, right? Because... And if you think back to the many moons ago for the characters, a year previous, um, remember her weird conversation in, like, the cargo bay um, with Nix5, where she was like, I'm different now. Yeah. And I can do this, and then she touched him. Like, yeah. Like, definitely. There's shit going on with Alice. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I think like it's it's an interesting question like as well like what is a soul? How does a creature come by it? Uh -huh. And uh, you know it's it, it's like it's this this sort of thing kind of happening in real time with her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, I enjoyed getting to sort of piece things together a little bit mm -hmm. in Absalom. Um, is it all fell apart around you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, it's it's, it's um, it wasn't it was I suppose in a sense quite like a heavy. Uh, that's cool. I I don't mind being a talker, um, <laughs> so that was quite fun. What really? Um, yeah, and I, I know right. You're shocked. Wow, uh, I am shocked. But I, I did also enjoy that we sort of like had like that little sort of. Subdivision, like it, mm. I know, sp never split the the team, but I think it actually it's an interesting moment. I, mean, I think I've split does. you guys as often as bloody possible. <laughs> actually, to be honest, this ha <laughs> most of this campaign's been split. <laughs> Changes the dynamics of the party. It means like, oh, we have to go and get such and such. How do we know where they've gone? It it raises all sorts of interesting questions, like the question of does he have an alias? That's mm -hmm. an interesting question that we just sort of went in the spot and found an answer. So that was really cool. Uh, and I like, um, I like seeing sort of things like that because it just like it makes you explore a little bit of your character. That, as I say, it, it occurred to me probably would have done things like that before. That's why I like doing roles for that though. Like how good the, like we obviously got that roll of a nineteen for how good the alias actually will hold up, etc. As well, like I like all that stuff from a retroactive point of view. Like Ben Galensis has probably filled quite a few people over the years. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, I think as well, what I liked was, see just from a visual point of view, getting to see Lyco appear there go, ah, good, reporting for duty, I guess. Yeah. And then looking around going, this place is fuck. And then slowly realising, they're already dead. You yeah, know, the, the, like the double dead. take, almost, yeah. And then the slowly, you know, almost like Sindel forgetting that maybe they should tell you things. You know, like... Oh yeah, you'll you'll want to know this, and you should probably know this, and this is the reason. Also, we're going here for this reason, and we're leaving, or we're staying, and this is a problem, and the star stone, and blah blah blah. Yeah, it's um, and his time string and time ball, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite Hoovian, so mm. yeah. Yeah, suitable, right? You know, I'm not a fifth dimensional being, right? So it's harder for me to write that bullshit. Bye. Five st yeah. Um <laughs> was it ten stone June <laughs> Wednesday? <laughs> ten stone <laughs> Um Ethel <laughs> should add there uh call them. Ten, uh, ten stone June Wednesday. Yeah. I don't know that's <laughs> we, we really should have called this Ten Stone June Wednesday but anyway. <laughs> no, Ten Stone June Wednesday's coming up. Like I'm gonna use that name. Oh, that should have been like as alias. That should have been the alias. You should have been oh. a female wrestler. Um, anyway, sorry. <coughs> Alex. <laughs> well, what did I enjoy this session? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's always fun to uh, 
get to play with the mechanics and see what we can abuse. And, uh... Is that poor engine? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it never becomes sentient. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's one of the joys of the sci-fi genre. That as much as it can be an issue with the, you know, mm. the sheer amount of equipment in the books and the detail that you need to get in with rules, you get to do stupid plans. Yeah, uh, and it's super fun. See, watching you guys be like, can we just jump the ship a bit, like a bit? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's one of those things. I, I, you know, particularly with sci-fi as a genre, you can quickly end up outside the rules. So credit mm -hmm. to you, Ryan, for having the flexibility mm. to um. Oh yeah, Just like it, it gave me a a great ending scene in my head. So I was like, <laughs> no, I know exactly what I want to do with that. Obviously, if you had rolled really badly, Lyco might have been on the station for an extra day. But yep. yeah, it's yeah. I think that scene of having the ship appear in the middle of the station is way cooler. Yeah. So yeah, no. So again, you guys obviously <laughs> come up with some absolute nonsense plans, which end up wonderful. Um, <laughs> And we generally get roles that support us, right? You know, generally. Yeah. We're never ever, like, scuppered, I think, would be the term. Because um, mm. like, there, there, there were always options. Like, even though we were trying to work out what happened to Lyco, there were still the options of, like, let's let's go find out what's happening over there in Absalom, regardless, you know? And it is where, um, even at low levels, we do become quite specialised, because obviously we've got Zig doing his mystical uh, detections. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. The mechanic just as a class being so absurdly good at those two types of role. Plus even from even having someone like Alice on board, which normally would you know, some people would be like, Oh, you'd want the, the GMPC to make all the rules. I mm -hmm. like the helping mechanic because it means that most you're getting a plus two from her help if she does well. And yeah. full enough her focuses happen to be engineering and computing. Like that that's yeah. our, our main things. She's actually not that good at piling. But that's because she's not originally designed to be a pilot. She's just doing that so, yeah. you know, nobody else feels I like, weird. <laughs> I like we might be promoting Zig to the pilot from now on. But I like that as well. Um, it's kind of awesome. Uh, I'm picturing the rat with the flight goggles on. <laughs> it's the flight scarf <laughs> in the goggles. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The scarf's constantly waving. <laughs> yeah. It's just be a problem when he gets that star shaman level of being able to fly without a spaceship. It just means when he crashes, it's not that big a deal for him. Yeah. I think true. I can already fly without a spaceship. Oh, Jesus. I'm pretty okay. sure you can. Why are we yeah, using I got the that, like, level one. <laughs> Zora. Damn. The answer is Zora. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Zora needed the spaceship, but only get else did. I had to fly before the night. <laughs> um, um, that, yeah, it was also good, obviously, to see in the second part getting up, the puzzle pieces falling into place a bit more. Yeah, you could see the fragments are starting to form, you know? Yes. You could say that. I won't. Uh, but I don't know, know who would say that. I but, mean, uh, no, not me. Not I. <laughs> um, yeah. No, good. I'm good. As I said, it is nice to see people enjoying the setting as much as mm. what I've done and what you are doing to the setting. Um, <laughs> Nico? Uh, well, <laughs> I enjoy how much the game likes to screw me. <laughs> 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 That's fun. Uh, can you look at spaceships? No. Can you stay out of fire? No. <laughs> you remember what you can remember? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> um, also enjoyed the puzzle pieces. That's nice. It's nice to actually kind of figure on some things. Out. Um, Good. Mm. Hope hopefully maybe the, the uh, story's forming for you guys. That's uh, what you <laughs> Good job, Alex. And uh, at least doing something. Cause <laughs> good. Zig did something too, right? So oh. Zig did things, 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 things. I like the yeah, fact that I. this session did feel a bit like Zora walking into a room with everybody running around Zora, um, like busy work. And Zora was that person from Pirates of the Caribbean, or the captain just slowly walking down the stairs yeah, as everything <laughs> being like destroyed yeah. bit by bit. Glorious, but like. Not things getting destroyed, just him not knowing what to do and maybe picturing the spaceship getting destroyed as yeah. like Zig, I mean, like uh, obviously Zig, Nix5 and Alice flee around him trying to fix everything. 
it was quite the mechanical melancholy moment where I was just like, <laughs> I don't fly, I don't do computers, I don't do mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop playing spaceship games, Nico, unless you're going to build a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're taking. Yeah, I have no interest in the flying a spaceship mm. aspect either, but that doesn't bother me because there's other stuff in sci-fi that. Oh, definitely. Because you, know, like, no, you basically become a fucking detective. That's fine. It's. Yeah. Be, I mean, you have literally. It's been a case of where's Lyco? Lyco's over where the plot is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's plot good. Took me. Yeah, I did. I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> but you, um, you got, you made the plot happen that way. If I could also quickly interject with something I forgot to mention, yeah. I enjoyed the fact that as they're doing the, the jump, it's like, <laughs> Nix chooses that moment to mention, it's like, oh yeah, I read this speculative shit on, like, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Conspiracy like, Craig website. I, I found this in TG, someone <laughs> said he made his character do it, it would definitely work in real life, though. Um, <laughs> no, it was yeah. good. And it was just, you can imagine the character's reaction, like, wait, what? Theoretical. <laughs> Jump, <laughs> just like, but that's the thing. Zora just saying, just jump. It's just so good. Yep. Like they would never let me do this normally. Yeah, <laughs> under any other conditions. Yeah, it's like literally we're in dire straits, <laughs> and then you know, fucking extortionist it's, here. It's that sense of like you've already accepted the terrible plan. There's the <laughs> bit where I explain to you just how bad it really is. <laughs> you thought this was like a five. It's more of a three. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just went to easy my plans to get out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, getting out is fine. You've crash wait. landed before, right? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is when, like, I could accept it, though. your insurance company can't. comes to you and is like, point. "You're not using the engine as described." <laughs> 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 oh, uh, okay. It's been good. Was there anything else, uh, Nico? No, I think everything else is said already. Yeah, I actually had a lot of fun this session. It was, um. It does seem to be like, here's a bit of nonsense hijinks, versus also really important stuff that actually needs done. Like, the assembly is eating the ship is a bad thing, but it's hilarious trying to capture it, but if it doesn't get captured, we have no ship. Versus this one, which was, we've lost a Lyco, does it? How do we get him back? Who has him? Oh, we don't know. Like, he's gone. How do we get to him? I don't know. Can we maybe just. I know we've got engines, but could we engine our way into there? Because <laughs> um, we seem to be kicking the arse out of the engine anyway, so we may as well just put it out <laughs> to pasture. Just, yeah. just go with it. Yeah. Um, like, aye. So I you, also love that it took um, Nix 5 to actually go, well, who's taking him? Mm. For anyone to actually like try and even <laughs> contemplate coming up with with getting to that point, <laughs> just like he's gone. But that's what I like about that scene. That scene as well. If you take in the whole thing of you have just jumped in after being told don't ever go to Absalom because it's bad and on fire by many people, and then you get there and it is on fire and there is a fleet attacking a city in space, and you're like, well, and then you turn around and Lyco vanishes, and you go, fuck. Uh, and then obviously Zora breaks the engine. But like, okay, we need to wait here to get a uh, to get Lyco. Who is Lyco? You know, and it, like, there's a lot going on. So no wonder people are like, or their characters, I should say, are like high stressed, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. I think um, again, you guys just seem to be these characters. So it's always entertaining to watch <laughs> you guys play out. Um, obviously, the stuff you do lets me do what I do, um, which is always fun. And yeah, it's good to know that you are starting to like piece things together, as it were. Um, obviously, if we did like a post-game show, I'm sure we would discuss what our theories are on there. So, anybody that wants to pay us money to have that as a second job, guys, you know, listeners, like, subscribe, and ring the bell, and <laughs> other such things. Like, um, like, and Lyco, like subscribe. Yep. Like, um, yeah. Yep. Perfect. Um, I'm good here, guys. Uh, thanks for playing. You were wonderful. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody Thank at home. You. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.